What's up guys, this is your favorite fanfic YouTuber, the fanfic majesty, and welcome to another amazing video. You can follow me on Patreon for exclusive stories. 2 Ma, Chapter 26 Please stop making up your mind. Second update. Advertisement. Lafen, not only is your swordsmanship not weak. It's extremely rare to be pregnant with the sea. Only one person in a million people will have the potential talent of a king. The legendary conqueror's hockey. The scariest thing is that Lafen is only 7 years old this year. A seven-year-old who is pregnant with conquerors and possesses impressive sword skills. Where did this freak come from? Hokado felt that his cognitive view was about to be refreshed. Shock the world. Unbelievable. All that happened to Leifen caused Pokado's cognitive outlook to suffer one after another. I finally understand now, why Vice Admiral Garp insisted on bringing his seven-year-old grandson back to Naval Headquarters Marineford instead of letting him stay in East Blue. Leifen, his talent is terrifying. In addition, his strength improvement is too terrifying. If I were Vice Admiral Garp, I would be really worried. If my grandson with such a terrifying talent is tricked into becoming a pirate king, then my mentality would explode. Pokado finally understood what Garp was thinking. Little devil, come here quickly. Garp snorted, staring at Lathan. He still can't figure it out. Lathan, when did he learn swordsmanship? From the level of swordsmanship shown by Lathan just now, Garp can judge very accurately. Lathan's swordsmanship, without three to five years, is definitely impossible to hone so pure. So here comes the problem. Long, when he entrusted Lathan to his care, he never mentioned that Lathan has been practicing swordsmanship all the time. So, what is the truth of the matter? Garp was deeply curious, his eyes widened like donkey eyes, staring at Lathan, as if he wanted to see through all the secrets of Lathan who was only seven years old in front of him. You really want me to tell the truth? Lathan asked with a strange face. Nonsense. If you don't tell the truth, can you tell lies? Garp spoke angrily. Then I'll tell the truth, don't drop your jaws in shock. Lathan thought about it for a while, and then told the truth, in the past, I have never been exposed to swordsmanship, nor have I ever practiced swordsmanship. The words fell. Garp immediately retorted. No, if you have never been exposed to swordsmanship before, how could it be possible that the swordsmanship you showed today is so high? This is not in line with common sense. Not only Garp said it was unimaginable. Advertisement. Even Pokado, who was beside him, showed a look of astonishment. Never touched swordsmanship. Good guy. Then the level of swordsmanship you showed just now, is it just a show? Killed Kebby in an instant with a show. This of course does not show. Little ghost, you need to be skillful in lying. Lies like yours just now can't stand firm at all. Hurry up and tell the truth, or don't blame the old man for giving you an iron fist of love. Garp was menacing, to convince him that Lathan had never practiced swordsmanship. Unless the sun rises in the west. Just ask, a person who has never been exposed to swordsmanship, why is he so proficient in swordsmanship suddenly displayed? It's like an experienced swordsman who has practiced swords for ten years. With this level of swordsmanship, you still say that you have never touched swordsmanship. Who is this fooling? Although the old man doesn't know swordsmanship, don't fool the old man as an ignorant young man. You brat, you are really getting bolder and bolder. Garp looked unkind. Yes, I really don't know swordsmanship. But judging the level of swordsmanship is still very easy. According to Garp, Lathan's swordsmanship, without a few years, is absolutely impossible to hone so proficiently. How dare you lie and say that you have never touched swordsmanship? What a joke. Look, I'm telling the truth, but you don't believe me. Lathan seemed to have expected it, but shook his head helplessly. True, do you take this as the truth? Garp's eyes widened, and his voice rose sharply, loudly. Swordsmanship needs to be honed over a long period of time before the level can be improved. And Lathan, based on the level of swordsmanship you showed just now, I can judge very accurately that you have the basic qualities that a qualified swordsman should possess. The posture and movement of your katana in your hand, all of which give me a sense of deja vu, as if facing a swordsman who has been practicing swords for ten years. This kind of rich combat experience cannot be accumulated in a short period of time. Without three to five years, it is absolutely impossible to hone this kind of rich experience. It is undeniable that there are many talented sword masters with outstanding talents in this sea. However, there is no genius sword master who can be like what you just said. I have just come into contact with swordsmanship, and I already have such impressive swordsmanship attainments and experience. Experience can only be accumulated more and more after a long period of accumulation. No matter how talented a genius is, it is impossible to hone swordsmanship to your current level in a short period of contact. As a penultimate swordsman, Pokato stood up and began to analyze and explain very calmly and impartially. Advertisement. Listen, listen, Garp chimed in. Combat experience is not something that can be mastered by epiphany. It must be accumulated over many years before it can be integrated into one's body and turned into the body's instinct. So, based on the above analysis, I can judge for sure. Lathan, you have been in contact with swordsmanship for no less than three years. Pokato pointed to Lathan and said confidently. Three years. Good boy, it's hard for me to hide from grandpa. When Garp heard this, he immediately stared at Lathan with bad intentions. Facing the constant speculation and analysis of the two people in front of me. What the heck said seems to be reasonable. This made Lathan deeply tired. Say something, is it really appropriate for you two to be so crazy? 
Please stop making up your mind. I really have never touched swordsmanship before. Why is it so difficult to tell the truth now? It's so hard to be a human being. To be honest, no one believes it now. Lathan, am I right? You have practiced swords for no less than three years. With just three years of sword practice, can you reach the level of swordsmanship you have today? I have to admit that your talent for swordsmanship is very high. This talent for swordsmanship is quite rare even if you look at this sea. Pokato looked at Lathan with eyes full of wonder and admiration. This kid has been hiding for three full years. Could it be that Long didn't notice at all? Is this kid hiding too deep, or is this guy, Long, never paying attention to Lathan from the beginning? That's why he didn't realize the terrifying talent hidden in Lathan. Garp lost his eyes and fell into talking to himself. See the expressions of the two. Lathan opened his mouth, but couldn't speak for a moment. Fine, all in all, just be happy for yourself. Chapter 27 Playing Around, I didn't expect getting started with swordsmanship to be so easy. Advertisement. This was the first time that Lathan felt tired. To be honest, no one believes it. Instead, Colonel Pokato is still brainstorming crazily, using his own good swordsmanship level to conduct very careful analysis and judgment. The point is, not to mention, what Colonel Pokato said is so well-founded. Otherwise, didn't you see Garp's confident appearance? Obviously, Garp believed it. Pokato's remarks can be said to come from the serious evaluation of an excellent swordsman. However, the more Pokato talked, the more tired Lathan's heart became. Good guy, those who died almost told you that they survived. Colonel Pokato, I really didn't realize before that you still have this kind of brain power. With this kind of talent, instead of being the editor-in-chief of the Marine newspaper, you should be a colonel of naval headquarters instead, that would be a shame for you. Three years, in other words, you started to learn swordsmanship when you were four years old. I deduced that, right. Pokato smiled confidently. Ha ha, Lathan's smirk was half-hearted. If I continue to infer for you, all the dead will survive. I was exposed to swordsmanship at the age of four, and now I have such impressive swordsmanship attainments. I also have the rich experience of a swordsman who has practiced swordsmanship for ten years. What an amazing talent. Pokado was amazed. Little ghost, why didn't you tell me before that you know how to do swordsmanship? Garp's expression suddenly became suspicious. With this level of swordsmanship, why didn't Mao say it earlier? Thanks to myself for arranging the so-called devil training. With this level of swordsmanship attainment in hand, the devil training still has a hammer meaning. I said that I just got into swordsmanship since yesterday, do you believe me? Lathan couldn't resist telling the truth again. To be frank. I really just learned about swordsmanship yesterday, why do you all think I'm lying? No one will believe the truth, can I really be forced to lie? Yesterday, Garp and Pokato were stunned at the same time. Immediately, the two of them looked at each other and couldn't help laughing. It was as if they had heard a big joke. Boy, stop lying. The way you lie is really interesting. Garp patted Lathan's shoulder hard, laughing to the point of tears. Since you insist on emphasizing that you just came into contact with swordsmanship yesterday. Then, how do you explain that your level of swordsmanship attainments will fully reach the level of a qualified swordsman? Advertisement. Are you going to tell me that it took you a day to improve your swordsmanship from a rookie to a qualified swordsman? Pokato was all smiles. Colonel Pokato, your old deduction is finally correct this time. Lathan nodded earnestly. Uh, Pokato's smile was a little stiff, and his expression became suspicious. What? One day. In other words, this joke is a bit too big. Boy, what are you kidding? Garp cursed angrily, from a rookie to an introduction to swordsmanship in one day. Why don't you say that your conqueror's hockey also took one day to go from awakening to mastery? One day. Is it possible? Of course not. Anyway. Both Garp and Pokato are absolutely unacceptable. Subsequently, when he heard Garp's words, Lathan's expression suddenly became a little weird, and he looked at Garp. Old man, this time, you really guessed right. Uh, Garp was also stunned. Then, Garp and Pokato looked at each other. It is very obvious that there are countless question marks popping up in their heads. Question mark question mark question mark. What the hell? You have reached this level after just one day of fencing. Also, conqueror's hockey, are used one day to go from awakening to mastery. Think about it. The two looked at Lathan with weird eyes. Garp touched Lathan's forehead with his hand. You don't have a fever, why are you inexplicable, talking nonsense, something is wrong. Vice Admiral Garp, who is not young and frivolous. At Lathan's age, he has already achieved a feat that countless people in the sea cannot do. If it were me, I would also be so proud. It is inevitable. Pokato had an understandable expression on his face. Okay, I'll just say it straight. Whether you believe it or not, I'm putting the truth here anyway. Believe it or not is up to you, just don't say I'm lying. Lathan was helpless. These two guys don't take their own words as the truth at all. Do not care. Be honest. As for you, believe it or not. Swordsmanship is actually not difficult. I was just playing around, but I really didn't expect. Getting started with swordsmanship is actually that simple. Then, you have also seen that I have reached this level of swordsmanship in the first day of contact. Advertisement. Lathan told the whole truth. Getting started in a day. It is not. In fact, Lathan reached the entry level of swordsmanship in an instant. But obviously, Lathan doesn't think that Garp and Pokato can accept such a terrifying thing that completely subverts cognition. 
Just playing around, and then you're getting started with swordsmanship. Simple. Pokato's eyes widened. Anyway, believe it or not. All in all, he was indeed hit hard by Lathan's words. These words were like a sharp knife, piercing directly into his heart. Emotion. Is my swordsmanship all these years practiced for nothing? Is it really easy to get started with swordsmanship? Pokato couldn't help but recall that when he was a teenager in the past, he was taught swordsmanship by the master of the dojo. The feeling of suffering made him shudder to this day. I remember clearly. It took seven full years. He is barely getting started with swordsmanship. Seven years. It took seven years to barely reach the threshold of entry into swordsmanship. Now, what did the lad Lafen say? Getting started with swordsmanship in one day. Still very simple. No pressure. The corners of Pakato's mouth twitched constantly. For some reason, he wanted to kill Lafen right now. Really so angry. With talent, can you be arrogant and do whatever you want? However, Pokato had to admit it. Lafen's talent is indeed very rare. Looking at the sea, it can definitely be said to be one of the few examples. So, I never want to deal with geniuses again in my life. Pokato thought sadly. Really, some words from the mouth of a genius. Inadvertently, it is very likely to cause tens of thousands of times of painful critical blows to others. It's so f asterisk 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 g hurtful. Pokato, on the other hand, was obviously seriously irritated by these words of Lathan. No doubt, after this incident, Colonel Pocato had already had a psychological shadow on the genius in his heart. Chapter 28 Kevi doubted life on the spot. Advertisement. Get started with swordsmanship in one day. Take control of conquerors in one day. Garp was still chanting what Lathan had just said. Each one, taken out individually, is a terrifying example that can be called a shocking world. Is it possible? Impossible. For the first time, these were directly denied by Garp. Who can do it in one day, from a rookie in swordsmanship to a beginner in swordsmanship? No one can do it. Is the world's number one swordsman Hawkeye? Hawkeye can't do it either. And, master conquerors in one day. This is even more nonsense. Even with an excellent master teaching, it is impossible to go from just awakening conquerors to fully mastering conquerors in one day. It takes time to accumulate and practice gradually in a circular manner. Not to mention, Lathan, the brat, conquerors doesn't seem to have a master to teach him yet. The whole process, self-taught. It's even more impossible to master conquerors hockey in one day. To sum it up, Garp judged that what Lathan said was nonsense and had no possibility. Children always like to brag and exaggerate, which is inevitable. But Lathan's talent is indeed terrifying. Since that's the case, the old man won't tell his lies. Garp thought to himself. Aside, Pokado had the same idea as Garp. Ever since, the two just looked at Lathan with weird and suspicious eyes, but they didn't say too many questioning remarks. But in this way, Lathan was even more weary. Do not believe. Never mind. Too lazy to explain. Although Garp and Garp did not express doubts outright, Lathan could certainly capture the mood swings full of doubts in the eyes of both of them. It's still a long time anyway. Slowly, even if you don't want to accept it, you have to accept it. I hope that when the time comes, you can still maintain the current skeptical mentality. Being suspicious is always uncomfortable. Advertisement. The same goes for Lathan. But on second thought. The voyage to Marineford is a long way. There is still some time left for myself to prove what I said, but it is definitely not a lie. Only hope. Garp, Pokato, the two of them, it is good to be able to firmly believe in the doubts in their hearts. By the time, you must be careful, don't be slapped in the face by me. An expectant smile crept across Lathan's face. The other side. Belumbo walked to the stunned Kebi, and tugged at the ladder. Kebi, how are you? I, I'm fine. Kebi took a deep breath to suppress the many emotional fluctuations in his heart. Immediately, he smiled bitterly. I really didn't expect Mr. Lathan to be so strong. He couldn't help but think about it now. Before that, he boasted about Haiku's confident appearance in front of Lathan. Thinking of this now, Kebi couldn't help but feel very embarrassed. Emotion. From the very beginning, I was a clown in front of Mr. Lathan. No wonder the other party has always been confident. Do not, even, the other party didn't take himself seriously at all. Killed in seconds, Kirby is still a little bit out of his wits. The defeat was too tragic. As a result, it was difficult for him to completely calm down and calm down in a short period of time. I remember, Mr. Lathan wasn't this strong before, right? Belumbo couldn't help asking, but how to explain, Mr. Lathan seems to be a different person today. Kirby was also deeply surprised. Could it be that Mr. Lathan really let his own strength and swordsmanship reach such a terrifying state just by relying on one day? Beru Meber is a little creepy. This is impossible, right? Kirby's throat was dry. If that's the case, it's a bit scary. The day before and after. Advertisement. Then, I was surpassed just like that. Grunt. Kebby swallowed, his eyes widened and rounded, filled with deep horror. This is unrealistic, right? How can a person's strength improve so terrifying? One day before and after, there is a difference of 108,000 miles. But before, I clearly felt that Mr. Lathan's strength is much inferior to ours. When training in the Devil's Forest. Belumbo was puzzled. What you said, I felt it too. Kirby agrees. During the training in the Devil's Forest, he also felt that Lathan's strength was not strong at the beginning. So here comes the problem. 
What is the reason that made Leifen so strong in this short day? Even Kebi was caught in an instant. How can a person's strength change so much in one day? Kebi's eyes were lost, and he doubted his life on the spot. Perhaps, this is genius. Do not. This is a monster. Finally, Kebi can only use this explanation to explain the current situation. I have been comparing myself to a monster all this time. Kirby smiled wryly. I'm really asking for trouble and overthinking myself. How can humans and monsters be compared? By the way, Kebi, I suddenly remembered a more important thing. Belumbo's eyes flickered, and he looked at Kebi expectantly. What? Kirby asked back. I remember that you made a very solemn promise to me yesterday. If you did lose to Mr. Lathan, you'd be down for a week. Before Belumbo finished speaking, but Kebi directly interrupted. What? I didn't hear clearly. No, my ear was seriously injured. Mr. Lathan's swordsmanship may inadvertently hurt my eardrum. Belumb, I'm going to receive treatment now, so don't follow me. Kobe put oil on the soles of his feet and quickly ran away. Chapter 29 How to Solve It Hack it to death of course. Open black lens bracket fifth watch close black lens bracket. Advertisement. The duel between Lathan and Kirby is over. This little turmoil passed quickly. However, this matter has become a topic that hundreds of marines on the warship like to talk about, and they will have some heated discussions when they are free. And the name of Lathan went very smoothly, and it was deeply familiar to thousands of marines on the entire warship. No longer familiar is the grandson of Garp. Instead, in the name of instantly killing Kebi. This can also be regarded as, in the true sense, Lathan has gained a firm foothold on this warship. Before this group of marines called Lathan, most of them would call Lathan the grandson of Garp. Nowadays, most of them will face up to Lathan and call them by Lathan's real name. Such a change quietly affected the entire warship. Lathan, with its absolute strength, made this group of marines deeply admired. A genius swordsman who was only seven years old but easily killed Kebi in seconds, and is the grandson of Vice Admiral Garp, he has many identities in his body. Prompted Lathan to become one of the most famous personnel on the warship. After this duel, Kebi also seemed to have matured a lot, recognized his abilities and talents, and devoted himself even harder to training. But the difference is that, Kirby no longer talks about surpassing Lathan. The defeat was too tragic. Also, this defeat also made Kebi truly aware. There is a huge difference between people. Inborn, there is a huge gap. The gap that cannot be made up at all. Just ask. Humans, how can they be compared with monsters? Kebi has completely cut off his mind about surpassing Lathan. Kirby doesn't think he can catch up with Lathan with his talent and hard work. This is obviously not realistic. In short, Kebi, I am completely convinced by Lathan. Whether it is strength or talent, Kebi admires Lathan. Vice Admiral Garp, Vice Admiral Garp. Several Marines looked hasty, and their footsteps were chaotic on the deck, and there were bursts of loud voices. What happened? Hokuto frowned, stood on the deck fence, put down the information in his hand, and turned his head to ask several Marine soldiers who were in a hurry. As a Marine colonel, Hokuto is often much more competent than Garp. Garp is equivalent to a hands-off shopkeeper. In fact, Hokuto was responsible for many tedious tasks of navigating the warship, and gave orders to the helmsman, navigator and others below. Garp rarely asks about these. Most of the time, Pokato is alone in charge. Advertisement. It can also be said that Pokato is the second in command of the entire warship. Colonel Pokato, there seems to be a Sea Kings right behind our warship. The Marines looked a little apprehensive. When encountering Sea Kings in the sea, even Marine cannot guarantee a 100% solution. Sea Kings. Pokato was surprised. As if thinking of something, he turned his head and glanced at the surrounding sea area. The sea was calm. Do not. Wrong. It should be said that there is no wind. There is no wind. Pocato narrowed his eyes slightly, thinking carefully, have you come to Calm Belt yet? Yes, the current warship has officially entered the Calm Belt waters. This is only the case with the Calm Belt. There is no wind at all in the sea, so the warship cannot rely on the wind to propel it to sail. Ordinary pirate ships would be in trouble if they strayed into the Calm Belt unintentionally. Without the propulsion of the wind, it is difficult for ships to sail out of the Calm Belt, and they can only float here on the Calm Belt, stagnating in place. Also, in Calm Belt, the number of Sea Kings is very large, which is one of the root causes of the crisis in Calm Belt. In addition to the fact that there is no wind to propel the sailboat, it also needs to face the Sea Kings under the sea. So, even warships sailing to Calm Belt must be cautious and cautious. Only, the reason why the warship sailed into the Calm Belt this time was not an accidental move, but a deliberate one. If you want to return to Marineford from East Blue, you will naturally go through the Grand Line. However, if you follow the normal navigation, rush from East Blue to Upside Down Mountain, and then rush to the Grand Line through the Upside Down Mountain Current, it will undoubtedly waste a lot of time. At this time, the effect of Calm Belt is reflected. By letting the warship cross the Calm Belt, you can directly avoid the Reverse Mountain and directly reach the Grand Line, thus saving a lot of time. Naval Headquarters, has always been in control of the technology that allows warships to traverse the Calm Belt. The bottom structure of the warship will also add some special materials, which can effectively prevent the Sea Kings from inexplicable attacks, and avoid group fights when encountering too many Sea Kings here on Calm Belt. That's why the entire warship dared to sail into the Calm Belt. But I don't know why. This day, it was a rare encounter with a Sea King's tailing. This made Pokato look a little puzzled. Take me to sea. 
Yes, Colonel Pocato. Advertisement. Follow a few marine soldiers all the way to the tail of the warship deck. As predicted, standing on the deck, Pocato did exactly what several marine soldiers said. In the sea area behind the warship, he saw a huge black phantom lurking under the seabed, following him all the way. Preliminary conservative estimation, its body size is about 20 meters. It's a large sea king's. Pocato frowned. The 20 meter long sea kings already belong to the category of large sea kings. Colonel Pocato, do you want to drive it away? Several marine soldiers couldn't help asking questions. Although I don't know what caused it to be attracted by our warship to follow it all the way. But since it has been chasing after it, it can't be driven away by simply driving it away. Pocato pondered. At this time, a voice sounded from beside Pocato without warning. Colonel Pocato, let me settle this matter, how about it? The sound just fell. Pocato looked at Lathan beside him with surprise. He didn't realize when Lathan came to his side. Are you here to solve it? Pocato had a curious expression on his face, how are you going to solve it? This sea king is 20 meters long, and it's not as simple as an ordinary small sea king. Not to mention, still at sea, could it be, want to go to the sea in person and fight this sea king's head on? If Lathan really had this idea, Pocato had to give Lathan a good warning. Fighting against the sea kings with pure flesh, unless Garp did it himself, Pocato didn't think that there was a second person on the entire warship who could do such a feat. How to deal with it? Of course it is. Hack it. Facing Pocato's question, Lathan smiled and slowly raised the samurai sword in his right hand. He used actions to prove how to deal with this sea kings. Chapter 30 Slash, The Symbol of the Swordsman. Advertisement. Hey, have you heard? Right behind our warship, there seems to be a giant sea kings with a length of about 20 meters following it all the way. I don't know the purpose. What, sea kings? I remember that our warships sailed in the calm belt in the past, and rarely encountered sea kings. Not to mention, we were also followed by a sea king all the way. Many marines showed puzzled expressions. Don't worry about it so much, do you want to go to the theater? Watching a play, what play? Lathan, the grandson of Vice Admiral Garp, will take care of the sea kings himself. Real or fake? Of course it's true, for a while. The huge warship was noisy and noisy. In, Kevi and Beru Meber were also alarmed. Sea kings with a length of more than 20 meters. Mr. Lathan, will it work? Beru Meber couldn't help expressing his doubts. Come on, let's go take a look too. Kevi stopped the current training and rushed to the tail area of the warship deck together with Beru Mebo. When you arrive at the scene, you can see a sea of people. Almost the entire marine of the warship is surrounded to the tail of the deck, and the atmosphere is very noisy. Everyone's words made the atmosphere here extraordinarily chaotic. Quiet, Pokado gave an order. Booze. Everyone's words stopped abruptly, and they stopped talking. It's just that it still can't be stopped, a pair of eyes full of curiosity and expectation, fixed on the immature and young figure with a samurai sword next to Pokato. Everyone stared expectantly at Lathan's back. Hundreds of marines gathered at the stern of the deck. And make it a bit crowded here. Following Pokato's order, no one dared to disturb the quiet atmosphere here again. Among the crowd, Kevi and Belumbo also stared at Lathan closely, with a look of anticipation. I took a look by chance just now, and I saw that the Sea Kings is at least 20 meters long, and it is an out-and-out -out large Sea Kings. Beru Meber couldn't help but whispered in Kevi's ear. Large Sea Kings of 20 meters, can Mr. Lathan do it? Kevi couldn't help expressing his doubts. Although he was instantly killed by Lathan, he still couldn't imagine whether Lathan could really deal with a giant Sea Kings with a length of more than 20 meters. Dealing with a large Sea Kings is of course two completely different concepts compared to dealing with him. There are not a few people who have the same idea as Kevi. Almost all the marines present, like Kevi, were deeply suspicious of Lathan's strength. Advertisement. That is a large Sea Kings 20 meters in length. Can Lathan, who is only seven years old, really do it? The grandson of Vice Admiral Garp is only seven years old. It must be very difficult for Lathan to deal with a Sea Kings with a length of 20 meters. At only seven years old, do I have to deal with a giant Sea Kings alone? I can't help thinking that when I was seven years old, I still hadn't given up the habit of peeing my pants. In contrast, I feel that my life is like a dog on the body. The crowd whispered to each other. Little devil, can you do it? Garp stood beside Lathan, doubtful. He glanced sideways, and saw the figure of Sea Kings following the warship all the way. Can be accurately estimated, the size of this Sea Kings is about 23 meters. Therefore, Garp had to express doubts, can Lathan really do it? Old man, no matter how bad it is, won't you still be there in the end? Anyway, I will hone my sword skills. As for whether I can succeed, it depends on the samurai sword in my hand. You ask me how it turned out. Actually, even I myself don't know what the final result will be. But I believe that the sword skills I have mastered will not embarrass me too much. Lathan smiled. Hearing this, Garp didn't say much more. I see. In full view, Lathan slowly raised the katana in his hand. The sharp blade shone with a dazzling halo in the sunlight. That moment, the smile on Lathan's face was restrained, his eyes became calm, his breath was steady, and the emotional waves in his eyes were like a calm lake without fluctuations. At the same time, a faint breath was released from Lathan's body, sweeping in all directions. Pokato, who was closest, was the first to feel this breath. Is it the sharpness of a swordsman? 
It seems that he has become much stronger than when he confronted Kebi in the morning. What a horrible monster. Hokuto was amazed. Sharp. The ubiquitous sharpness, released from Lathan's body. The unique aura that belongs to the sword hero quickly swept every corner of the deck inch by inch. Mr. Lathan's breath has become more powerful. Unfathomable. Kebi swallowed and couldn't help but speak. He suddenly felt. Advertisement. His own redoubled efforts seemed to lose all meaning at once. No matter how hard you try, you can't get close to the young figure in front of you. Even. You can't even see or touch the back of the other party. The gap is too big. This brat. Feeling the sharpness of Lathan's aura, Garp's eyelids twitched, and he calmed down a little. He didn't utter too many words to disturb him, and chose to remain silent. At this time, Lathan's whole body is like a sharp famous knife about to be unsheathed. That sharp aura made his figure extraordinarily tall and majestic. The sharp edge makes people dare not look directly at Lathan's figure. The young and immature figure appeared in the eyes of all the marines around, but all of them could only look up, their eyes full of awe. Lathan, he has all the basic qualities a good swordsman should have. Hokuto thought to himself, unimaginable. Lathan, only seven years old. But the other party already possessed such terrifying sword skills. The scariest thing is, Lathan's sword skills are still growing at a frightening speed. I have a knife in my hand. Cut off everything in the world. Lathan quietly stared at the black phantom lurking on the bottom of the sea more than 10 meters away. This is a large sea king's with a length of more than 20 meters. His eyes flickered sharply, visible to the naked eye. The samurai sword in Lathan's hand gradually gathered a faint purple halo, wrapping around the blade, making the blade look extraordinarily weird. Cold, the icy breath spread from the samurai sword in Lathan's hand, filling the distance. Kindness, this, is this. Standing beside Lathan, Hokado shrank his pupils, stared at the samurai sword in Lathan's hand in shock, and stared at the faint purple halo wrapped around the blade. Obediently, myself, read that right, Lathan boy. He actually mastered the slash. Slashing, this is the symbol of a qualified and excellent swordsman. But Pokoto never expected it. Lathan's swordsmanship has already begun to touch this level. This really exceeded Pokoto's expectations. Chapter 31 The Slash That Splits the Sea. Kill Sea Kings in Seconds. Second Update. Advertisement. Rubbing his eyes, Colonel Pokoto's eyes were wide and round, his mouth opened as if a fist could be stuffed in, and he stared closely at the figure of Lathan holding a samurai sword. His gaze was always fixed on the blade of the samurai sword in Lathan's hand. Close range. Very obvious to see. The samurai sword in Lathan's hand was covered with a faint purple halo. An icy breath emanated from the blade. Pokato standing beside Lathan, of course, could not help but feel the fierce aura brought by the purple halo of the samurai sword in Lathan's hand. As if, on the blade, extremely violent power is constantly being gathered, trapped in the blade, always waiting for the moment of eruption. No doubt, Pokato can be 100% sure. This is the sword hero's slash. Only an excellent swordsman can unleash a unique attack method. Slash. Except for Pokoto. Garp also saw this weird scene. Lathan the brat, have you even mastered the slash? Garp took a deep breath, his heart shaking. There were so many weird things that happened to Lathan that Garp was a little numb from the shock. He can predict. Lathan's sword skills are not low. But he couldn't predict after all that Lathan's swordsmanship has reached the level where he can unleash slashing strikes. What an incredible talent. Garp's mood was difficult to calm down in a short time. Thousands of marines surrounding the stern of the deck inevitably saw what happened to Lathan. Including Kebi. Beru Meber and the others, their tongues widened and their eyes widened, staring in horror at the purple halo wrapped around the katana blade in Lathan's hand. This, what is this? Belumbo said that his thinking was confused and his face was bewildered. Slash. Kebi's lips trembled, and he blurted out an explanation in a low voice, only a qualified and excellent swordsman can unleash a slash. This is a very terrifying offensive method. But I never expected, I actually saw this kind of swordsman's offensive method from Mr. Lathan. This moment, Kebi has completely let go of the fact that he will be instantly killed by Lathan. Isn't it normal to lose to this kind of monster? Even. Kirby is very happy. In the duel with Lathan at that time, the opponent did not use slashing to deal with him. Otherwise, are you dead? Advertisement. Kirby swallowed, staring blankly at Lathan's back. Pairs of amazed and shocked eyes all gathered on Lathan's back. I see. The samurai sword wrapped in a faint purple halo slowly fell down. Lathan held a samurai sword in his hand, his eyes were calm and without ripples, staring at the black phantom lurking under the sea directly in front of him, and gently swung the blade in his hand. Moment. Lavender Halo, released from the blade. The terrifying and violent power has always been imprisoned on the edge of the blade, and at this moment it seems to have found a breakthrough, and it began to vent crazily. Like a gushing tide of water. Surging. The majestic power was fully released from the blade in an instant. The lavender sword energy became rich and dark purple, and the power contained in it became more and more terrifying and violent. From the blade, all the way to the tip. Then, aim at Wang Yanghai directly in front. Full release. Cut. Lathan is highly focused and focused. Swing down the blade, a terrifying and fierce purple slash was instantly forced out from the blade of the samurai sword, turning into a mass of terrifying purple sword lights, and swiftly struck the sea ahead. Bright. Dazzling. Fear. This is the only way to describe this slash. Hum. The space seemed to be squirming crazily as it was pierced by this slash. 
It seems that the space has been forcibly distorted. The terrifying slash contained extremely violent tearing force, rushing towards the sea. Moment. Boom. The sea was forcibly split open. The majestic power is like tearing a curtain. The seemingly thin sea was directly split apart under this terrifying cutting. The huge sea was actually split open by this slash. Yes. The sea is split. In the Azure Sea area, a gap was abruptly cut open. Like, an abyss. The sea water on both sides cannot fill the hideous and terrifying sea crack in the middle. Slash. Run through the sea. Go all the way. This scene, presented in the eyes of everyone, made everyone look shocked and terrified. Advertisement. Shocking. Who can imagine? The sea was split open with a knife. Crash. The sea water was surging, and it was rolled up and floated high in the sky. The originally calm sea surface of calm belt was completely stirred up, setting off wave after wave of currents, rushing swiftly in all directions, rippling waves after waves. The force of the terrifying slashing explosion made the sea current churn continuously, and the waves spread, completely engulfing the entire warship. The warship was shaking crazily. Hundreds of marines were standing on the deck, their bodies were constantly bumping, swaying and twisting with the shaking of the warship. The shadow of the giant black Manos Grande lurking under the sea, originally its figure was somewhat blurred by the sea water, making it impossible to see its whole picture clearly. It can penetrate the sea with a slash. Finally, its full body shape is exposed to the air. The sea water can no longer hide its figure. Because. The sea has been pierced abruptly. And in the four seas where it lurks, there are only drops of sea water soaking its body, and the sea surface splits in the middle, making its figure seem to be floating in midair suddenly out of thin air, appearing extremely conspicuous and prominent. Then, its figure is clearly illuminated by the sun. This is a large sea king's 23 meters long, like a crocodile, with its fangs exposed and scales all over its body, it looks extremely ferocious. However, at this moment, it is facing the majestic and thick purple terrifying slash released by Lathan. From the front, it was aimed at its body. Feel the majestic power sweeping the whole body. It is also humanized, revealing the emotional waves of fear, emerging in its pair of huge scarlet pupils. Facing this slash, it panicked. The emotion of fear dominates its body. It wants to escape, but the sea has been cut open at this moment. How could it escape? There is no escape. Crash. The force of the seawater being blasted by the slash directly hits and splashes hundreds of meters into the air. The fierce purple slash has arrived in front of this sea king's. Then, without the slightest hesitation, slash and fall head on. To the head of the sea king's, exactly. Hit. Puff. A cloud of blood mist instantly splashed from Sea King's body and head. Chapter 32 Large Sea Kings. This is the result. Open black lens bracket third watch close black lens bracket. Advertisement. Boom. The purple terrifying slash hit Sea King's head on, hitting its scale-covered head. Just hit the moment. Its seemingly hard scales looked as fragile as tofu, and were directly cut through by this terrifying slash, pierced into it, and were penetrated on the spot. No hindrance. Its so-called defense is meaningless in the face of the power of this slash. Puff. The slash tore through all its defenses, and dealt an unparalleled and painful blow to it. Blood gushed out from the wound. The power contained in the slash did not fade away. Instead, this berserk force continued to penetrate Sea King's head, extending all the way from Sea King's head to his body. The power spread, quickly corroding Sea King's body like a virus, destroying its internal organs, as well as its bones. Click, click. A crisp and pleasant voice sounded from its body. The bones are broken. The scale armor was penetrated. Awful. It's too tragic. Its body was almost wiped out by the power of the slash. This slash almost killed all the vitality in its body, as if it wanted to crush and destroy every cell in its body. Puff. Puff. Visible to the naked eye, there are numerous wounds on Sea King's body, and these are the wounds pierced by the force of the slash. Blood was crazily overflowing from these wounds. The bright red bloodline fell from the wound on Sea King's body, and quickly merged into the sea water on both sides, briefly dyeing the Azure Sea area red. The 20-meter-long Sea King spouted blood like a fountain, which quickly dyed the surrounding sea area red, making it look extraordinarily awe-inspiring. This scene looked extraordinarily weird. Scalp tingling and creepy. Crash. The aftermath of the slashing power finally disappeared in the depths of the sea. The surface of the sea was still being rolled up with waves and ripples, and waves spread in all directions. Magnificent. The waves are surging. The sea water, which was lifted up hundreds of meters above the ground, fell downwards, hitting the sea surface and causing waves of ripples, and the splashed seawater was scattered in all directions. A drop of seawater splashed on the deck of the warship. Like a downpour pouring from the sky, the marine uniforms that infected thousands of marines made their bodies feel a chill from the bottom of their hearts. This this. It's over. Dead. Dead. The large sea kings with a length of more than 20 meters was killed simply like that. There was a slight breeze. The pungent smell of blood wafted in the air. This side of the sea was dyed red. The waves that were stirred up wantonly before also began to gradually calm down. Advertisement. At the same time, on the rippling sea surface, a very huge corpse gradually floated up. That is, the dead body of the Sea Kings. A giant Sea Kings with a length of 23 meters was instantly killed. Yes, killed instantly by Lathan. From the beginning to the end, it didn't show any ability to resist, it can be said that it has no power to resist. Hailed by countless people as the most terrifying life in the sea, the Sea Kings is also a giant Sea Kings with a length of 20 meters. 
However, it's as simple as that, beheaded. What's even more frightening is. This Sea King's was killed in an instant. The moment the slash was released and hit, it died on the spot. This, who dares to imagine? It's incredible. Is this still the ferocious Sea King's? Is it still the most terrifying life species in the sea in people's impression? But the scene in front of him subverted the cognition of everyone present. It also subverts people's previous perception of Sea King's. In everyone's impression, Sea King's, aren't they all fierce? The kind that can easily sink a warship and cause huge waves if it moves. Why? Today, the Sea King's they see seems a bit weak. Too weak. They dare not even dream. This Sea King's is so weak that he can't even block a single blow. So much so that it takes seconds to be seen face to face. Is this really Sea King's? What the hell are they big Sea King's? Big Sea King's, and that's it. Everyone just felt that things were getting more and more unimaginable. Moment. The turbulent waves gradually subsided. On the surface of the sea, there was a huge corpse floating. The corpse of Sea Kings, more than 20 meters long, floated on the surface of the sea and did not sink under the sea for a short time. The corpse fluttered weakly with the waves in the cold. As the turbulence of the waves gradually subsided, the warship that was shaking violently also became stable. Silence. The atmosphere is weird. Standing on the deck of a warship. Hundreds of marines stared blankly at the huge Sea King's corpse floating on the sea in front of them with their horrified and horrified eyes. Eyes, can't move. The eyes of a group of people became dumbfounded. Advertisement. Really, really dead. The large Sea King's with a length of 23 meters was really smashed. One knife, just one knife in front and back. This huge Sea King's was killed in one blow. This is too exaggerated, isn't it? It's unbelievable. A group of marines showed their shocking emotions. They stared wide-eyed, staring at the corpse floating in the sea. For sure. The Sea Kings are indeed dead. It can be clearly captured that there are still many traces of wounds on the body of the Sea Kings floating on the sea surface. Blood still spilled out of the body from these wounds in an endless stream, infecting this side of the sea. Sea Kings, are they really the Overlord life species of the sea? Then what's going on with what I'm seeing now? It is known as the Overlord life species of the sea. As a result, this is it. It's still a large Sea Kings, not as simple as an ordinary Sea Kings. But, it seems too weak. It can't even stop a knife, and it is worthy of the title of Overlord Life. Grunt. Someone swallowed, unable to calm down. All kinds of things happening in front of you. No doubt. Completely overturned the previous impression of Sea Kings by this group of Marines. Instakel. The large Sea Kings with a length of 20 meters was instantly killed by Mr. Lathan. Kebby, you, did you see it just now? Belumbo's throat was dry and his lips were trembling. I saw. Kebby's eyes were wide open and his expression was full of shock, it was difficult to contain the shock in his heart. Immediately afterwards, he blurted out subconsciously, however, this is by no means the reason why sea kings are too weak. Sea kings, as the overlord life species of the sea, are definitely not weak. As for why, it appears so fragile in our eyes. That's purely because the people it faces are too scary. What it faces is a monster from head to toe. It's not so much that sea kings is too weak, it's better to say that the monster sea kings is facing is too strong, which makes sea kings so weak. Kirby took a deep breath, forced to suppress the shock in his heart, and looked away from the corpse of sea kings. Turn your sight. Finally, Kebby's eyes fixed on the front, looking at the young figure holding a samurai sword. He opened his mouth, his tone full of shock and admiration. It comes down to it. Actually, it's just Mr. Lathan, the reason why his strength is too terrifying. This will give us the illusion that Sea Kings is weak. Chapter 33 being shown off by a seven-year-old child one after another. Open black lens bracket for more close black lens bracket. Advertisement. In summary, how can the large Sea Kings with a length of 23 meters be so weak? It's not that it's too weak, but that Mr. Lathan it's facing is too strong. It will be killed in an instant, and it is completely in line with common sense. Kebby expressed his inner analysis heavily. He didn't blindly believe that the Sea Kings were too weak like the Marines around him. If the Sea Kings were really weak, they would naturally not become a nightmare for so many people in the sea, and it would be even more impossible for them to be given the title of Sea Overlord for hundreds of thousands of years. Well known. It has never been pirates, Marines, or even humans who rule the sea. But Sea Kings, the reason why the large Sea Kings in front of me was seconded is not that it is too good, but that Lathan is too strong. Yes, after listening to Kebby's analysis, Belumbo nodded subconsciously. His eyes also looked a little absent-minded, staring blankly at the young figure standing by the fence at the tail of the deck, holding a sharp samurai sword tightly in his hand. The gap is too big. They are not the same species as each other. The other party is only seven years old, but it has been able to do it easily, the feat of killing a large Sea Kings in seconds. Previously, of course they couldn't imagine that Lathan, who was only seven years old, could actually kill a large Sea Kings. But the other party not only did it, even, it exceeded their expectations. Spike. With one knife, a large Sea Kings was killed on the spot. What kind of terrifying strength and swordsmanship is this? Sea Kings, the most tenacious thing is not its attack power. It's its defense power and vitality. This is the fundamental reason why they can be the dominant life species at sea. How difficult it is to break through its defense. And if you want to kill it, it's even more difficult. 
But Mr. Lathan's knife not only broke the defense, but even crushed all the vitality of its body. I have to say, it's really shocking. Kevy still had lingering fears, and his shocked mood could not be cooled down. The gap is too big. This moment, he can understand it more deeply. The gap between him and Lathan is like a gap, unreachable and impossible to cross. The essential, Lathan is only seven years old this year. And Kevy is already sixteen years old. Lathan has not yet entered the growth period of soaring strength, but has already shown such terrifying strength and talent, which makes Kevy feel helpless. Knew it, some people are born different. Monster. Kevy looked at Lathan's back, and couldn't help making weak complaints in his heart. Around, a group of marines exclaimed endlessly. Obviously. No one of them could have predicted this result. Who would have thought that such a ferocious sea kings would be so good, it would kill him instantly. With more and more voices talking about it, people gradually corrected their mentality and gradually got rid of the absurd idea that Sea Kings is actually weak in their heads. Advertisement. If they sail in the sea in the future, with such thoughts in mind, they may not even know how they died in the sea. Sea Kings are weak. What a joke. As for why the current Sea Kings will be killed in one shot. That's just because the strength of the person it faces is too terrifying. The grandson of Vice Admiral Garp, the strength is a bit scary. With one blow, he instantly killed the large Sea Kings with a height of 23 meters. This level of strength must be comparable to those of the majors in the headquarters, right? Seeing. Thousands of marines couldn't calm down and were amazed by the huge corpse floating on the sea. Crash. The waves of the sea slowly entered the stage of calming down. Visible to the naked eye. The hideous crack on the sea surface that was split open by the slash, as the power of the slash completely dissipated, the seawater also flowed in, gradually filling the hideous crack and restoring it to its original state. The crack in the sea that originally spread tens of meters away disappeared without a trace. But this scene has formed a permanent memory, deeply embedded in the minds of thousands of marines, making it hard for them to forget it in their lifetime. The sea. It was split open with a knife. What kind of terrifying power is this? The surface of the sea has returned to its original state. A group of marines lost their eyesight. God knows. When they saw just now that even the sea was forcibly split into a hideous crack, how shocked they were. What happened just now seems to be hallucinating. Do you dare to imagine? The sea was split open. When they saw the recovery of the sea, people were still a little bit in a daze. This is not an illusion, but a fact that is happening right in front of our eyes. Lathan, the grandson of Vice Admiral Garp, literally cut the sea. Split the sea and kill a large sea kings on the spot. Strong. The scariest thing is, Mr. Lathan, you are only seven years old this year. Thinking of Lathan's age, many marines present were shocked. It's so shocking to the world. At only seven years old, he has already mastered such terrifying sword skills and strength. If you give the other party a little more time to grow up, how terrible will it grow to? Unimaginable. At first, no one believed that Lathan, who was only seven years old, could deal with a large sea kings with a length of 23 meters by one person with one knife. But when the result appeared, it was like a heavy hammer, hitting the heads of all of them, making them stun for an instant and their heads buzzing. Just seven years old is enough to kill big sea kings. Think about it. Many marines only feel that their time in this life is spent on dogs. It's really incredible swordsmanship. Pokato took a deep breath, and then calmed down from the shock. Obviously, Lathan's swordsmanship attainments have seriously exceeded his previous evaluation of Lathan's swordsmanship, and are much higher than he imagined. With ease, looking at Lathan's back, Garp slowly highlighted the four words. These four words can only be used to describe the situation of Lathan dealing with the Sea Kings alone. Advertisement. It's so easy. The whole process was extremely straightforward, killing a large Sea Kings in seconds without the slightest delay. It seems that this kid Lathan has an extremely terrifying talent in the field of swordsmanship. When I return to Marineford, I will find him a qualified swordsmanship master. Garp thought to himself, he has already begun to ponder, which swordsman in Marineford is more suitable to be Lathan's swordsman. At this time, slowly retracting the samurai sword in his hand, Lathan realized that the eyes of a group of marines looking at him were full of shock and shock. What a great show. If you have to ask me to evaluate your performance just now, I can only describe it in four words. That is, impeccable. Pakato patted Lathan's shoulder deeply, and praised without hesitation. He did not exaggerate, but made an evaluation in all fairness. In his eyes, Lathan's performance can indeed be said to be impeccable. Actually, that slash can be optimized better. However, with my current level of swordsmanship, I haven't reached that level yet, which is a bit of a pity. Let me judge for myself. My performance just now can only be regarded as mediocre. Lathan smiled modestly. One, so-so. The smile on Pokato's face was stiff, and the corners of his mouth couldn't help twitching. Boy, are you afraid that you have misunderstood the concept of these three words in general? Do you regard the performance of the large sea kings just now as average? Not to mention, have you forgotten that you are only seven years old this year? Say something. You are only seven years old, do you want to be so harsh on yourself? How do you let others live? Pokato was a little mad. Lathan's words formed a critical blow of 10,000 tons, directly piercing Pokato's heart. Unknowingly, I am a dignified colonel of naval headquarters, and I was shown off by a seven-year-old child one after another. I said it earlier, I really hate geniuses, I hate an outright monster even more. 
Leifen's little ghost show is operated in a set way, and it can use different words every time to attack people. Hateful. Simply hateful. The point is, Colonel Pokado was very aggrieved and felt powerless to discover. He was completely unable to refute Leifen's words. Chapter 34 Pokado. What crime am I doing? Open black lens bracket fifth watch close black lens bracket. Advertisement. The sea breeze blows gently. The pungent and strong smell of blood quickly drifted in this sea area with the icy sea breeze. The blood that infects the sea and turns the sea red is also slowly diluted and desalinated. The huge sea king's corpse also began to show signs that it was about to sink to the bottom of the sea. Don't waste resources. Garp shouted loudly, Chef, leave the delicious meat of this sea king's for the old man, put it in ice curry and keep it for later use. Yes, Vice Admiral Garp. Several pot-bellied chefs in marine uniforms jumped into the sea one after another to harvest the large sea king's carcass. Fearing that the smell of blood would attract other sea breezes around Calm Belt, several chefs were very skilled and only harvested a part of the delicious meat of sea kings, and the rest were not eye-catching. A few minutes, the bodies of the sea kings then sank into the sea. In less than a moment, several huge black phantoms began to wander under the sea. Crash! Bubbles rise from the sea surface. The bodies of the sea kings disappeared without a trace, and it is unknown whether they sank into the sea completely or were eaten by these large sea kings under the sea. Set sail. One order. The entire warship gradually began to sail. Mastering the technology of being able to sail at will on the calm belt and actively avoiding the attacks of the sea kings, the warship can sail very smoothly on the sea surface without being hindered or troubled. This turmoil ended with this. It's just that what happened today, the horrifying image of the world, has always remained in the minds of thousands of marines, making them hard to forget in their lifetime. Today, the shocking scene they saw. The scene where a seven-year-old child rips apart the sea with a sharp knife, and finally kills a 20-meter long giant sea kings in seconds. The name of Leifen deeply impressed this group of marines. It can be said that, Great reputation, slashed to sea kings in one blow, cut off the sea. All of this made Leifen's prestige ringing in the ears of this group of marines. You can easily kill a large sea kings at the age of seven. This reminds me that when I was seven years old, I still hadn't given up the habit of peeing my crotch. In contrast, I suddenly felt that I was an idiot. Be confident and remove the word, feeling, roll. A group of marines were talking about it. Since then, the warship headed towards Marineford again, sailing at full speed. As long as you pass through the current calm belt sea area, it is equivalent to entering the Grand Line and getting rid of the East Blue completely. It is also the ability to pass through the calm belt that makes Garp return to Windmill Village from time to time. Anyway, the whole process will not take too much time. If there is no technology for crossing the calm belt, it will take too much time to go back and forth between East Blue and Grand Line. Advertisement. Leifen, I'm going to find you a fencing master, what do you think? Garp found Leifen and asked with a serious face. How can my grandson have such a terrifying talent for swordsmanship, how can it be wasted? In Garp's view, finding a master with rich experience in swordsmanship and a very high level of swordsmanship is the right way. It is also the best way for Leifen to grow. Master of swordsmanship. Leifen froze for a moment. He really didn't expect it. Garp has taken this aspect into account. But, do you really need a master? Think about it. Leifen considered it carefully. It seems that whether it is the mastery of swordsmanship or conqueror's hockey, these are the abilities directly given to him by the system, and he is completely self-taught. Moreover, it was mastered in an instant. So, do I really need a guide like master? Of course not. In Leifen's view, the best master is yourself. That is to say, the system within oneself is the best master. Even if he forced to find a master with superb swordsmanship, Leifen didn't think that the other party could teach him much knowledge. Everything depends on the system you possess as the kingly way. But, of course, Leifen will not take the initiative to expose himself to the system. In this way, finding a master as a cover seems to be able to prevent many troubles. I don't expect my master to teach me anything, but somehow, I can avoid some troubles. From Leifen's point of view, it doesn't seem too bad. All benefits and no harm. It is good. Leifen eventually agreed to Garp's proposal. Don't worry, the old man will definitely find the best swordsmanship master to teach you swordsmanship. Garp laughed and slapped Leifen on the shoulder hard. Old man, pay attention, my shoulder is about to be crushed by you. Leifen's teeth itch in discomfort. Young people should hone their bodies. It's really embarrassing to the old man to see your body so fragile. Garp scolded with a grin. Not long. Leifen returned to the room. Watching Leifen leave, Garp stood still and began to think. Which master should I find more suitable? At this time, the very responsible Colonel Pocato walked up to Garp's side and gave a wave of presence, Vice Admiral Garp. Pocato, tell me, who should I choose from naval headquarters, who is the most suitable swordsman for Leifen? Advertisement. Garp's eyes lit up, and he quickly threw the question to Pocato beside him. Master of swordsmanship, Pocato fell into deep thought, and then his thoughts jumped. Vice Admiral Garp, what do you think of me? Kindness. Hearing Pocato's answer, Garp froze. Immediately. Garp's eyes widened, like donkey eyes, with a shocked expression on his face. No way, no way. Pocato, you don't really want to be my grandson's fencing master, do you? Did I hear it wrong? Or did you say it wrong? Garp looked at Pocato with suspicious and contemptuous eyes. Immediately, Pocato blushed, feeling ashamed. 
Fortunately, there is no one else around, so if you don't dare to lose face, you will be ashamed. Good guy, I took the initiative to mention it, but it was rejected on the spot. Anyway, Vice Admiral Garp, we are also your confidants and confidants who have followed you for many years. When you keep refusing, you can't be more tactful and save us some face. No matter what, at least hesitate, it's too straightforward for you to refuse. Pokoto, being a human being, it is important to have self-knowledge, be down to earth, and not be so ambitious. This will not do you any good. Garp patted Pokato's shoulder earnestly and taught him. The meaning of these words is very easy to understand. Garp's meaning is also obvious. You almost didn't tell Pokato directly, and you didn't take a pee and look in the mirror. Then, Garp is gone, looking at the back of Garp leaving. In the same place, Pokato wanted to cry but had no tears. What a crime I did. First shown off one after another by Lathan. This time, he was severely despised by Vice Admiral Garp again. God, it's really hard to be a human being. The characters of the grandfather and grandson are exactly the same. Chapter 35 It's finally check in time again. Six more. Advertisement. The next day, a golden halo fell from the edge of the sky. Clear skies. White clouds fluttered. The sea is blue and vast. Boom. Boom. The friction between the blade and the blade flashed a dazzling fire. There was a piercing sound as the metal weapons collided, and a weak airflow accompanied it, sweeping in all directions, covering every corner of the deck. On the deck of the warship, there were bursts of sound of weapons and blades colliding. In the battlefield, two figures holding blades are fighting each other back and forth. The battle is fierce. This scene, falling into the eyes of many marines around them, everyone held their breath and stared intently and seriously at the two fighting figures on the battlefield ahead. In, Kevi and Beru Meber even stared wide-eyed, put on all their energy, and stared at the battlefield tightly, not daring to look away, without blinking their eyes. So strong, Mr. Lathan's sword skills have become even more terrifying. Kevi took a deep breath and whispered to himself in shock. Yes, Belumbo deeply agrees. For the two figures who were fighting, he couldn't perceive their movements at all, and could only vaguely see the figures that stopped at the moment of their collision. Too fast. Both are so strong. The airflow of the battle erupted, sweeping over. Kevi and Beru Meber could only feel the majestic sense of oppression, squeezing their bodies, like a mountain pressing heavily on their shoulders, making their bodies extremely stiff. Of the two men at war, one of them was Lathan. And the other person is Pokato. Yes, Bakato, Colonel of Naval Headquarters, and Garp's confidant. A swordsman with very good swordsmanship. Now, Lathan is having a fierce confrontation with Pokato. Of course, in this battle, Pokato has not shot with all his strength. Instead, Pokato was reigning in his own strength, engaging Lathan as a grinding target. In this battle, Pokato was not originally an opponent of Lathan, but was purely used as an object of sparring for Lathan. Not bad, very good. Garp watched with relish and a smile on his face. Take a closer look, he found out. Lathan is like a piece of sea, frantically absorbing some experience from fighting Pokato. Visible to the naked eye, Lathan's terrifying growth rate. Really, choosing Pokato as a sparring partner for Lathan is the right thing to do. Let Pokato suppress his own strength and engage in fierce battles with Lathan, so that Lathan can gain more experience and awareness of fierce battles. Advertisement. In the sword fight with Pokato, Lathan can also gain more sword skills. Garp praised his approach. The effect is very significant. This can already be seen. Lathan's combat experience, from being similar to a novice at the beginning, has gradually grown into a veteran who seems to have experienced many life and death fights. This point can be most clearly experienced by Pokato, who is the object of sparring with Lathan. What a monster! Pokato looked at Lathan, who was focused and constantly attacking, and couldn't help being amazed. From the beginning, Lathan's actual combat skills are still a bit jerky. Although there is no denying that Lathan's experience with the sword is very sophisticated. But actual combat skills are still very different from swordsmanship experience. But Pokato never expected it. After this battle, Lathan seemed to have undergone a transformation. From being jerky at the beginning, he gradually transformed into an excellent marine soldier who seems to have experienced many battles. That kind of momentum, actual combat skills, beliefs, etc. In all aspects, Pokoto always feels like it. Could it be? Myself, fighting someone else, not Lathan. Lathan has changed so much. It's so big that Pokoto can't help but feel that the Lathan at the beginning is completely different from the Lathan now. The growth rate is too fast. It's just unbelievable. To this, finally, Pokoto had to think in his heart. Lathan is so talented. Monsters are always different from ordinary people. Just the current Lathan can already bring me a lot of pressure. It's really not easy. If there is no accident, after a while, I am afraid that I will be easily surpassed by him and trampled under my feet. Pokoto sighed helplessly. Really, in my life, what I hate the most are geniuses and monsters. The speed at which these people's strength increases is simply unreasonable. In the eyes of these monsters, I have worked hard at the level of strength for half my life. In the eyes of these monsters, it is just a small threshold that can be stepped on at any time. Gradually, the battle is over. Pokato looked at Lathan in front of him, took a deep breath, suppressed the shock in his heart and said, in all fairness, I judge based on my years of experience and eyesight. If you maintain the current growth rate, in less than half a year, your strength and swordsmanship will completely surpass mine. 
The words fell. Surrounded by many Marines, their faces were full of shock. Including Kebi and Beru Meber. They were also stunned. Half a year. Is it enough to completely surpass Colonel Pokato? Okay. Real or fake? Advertisement. Colonel Pokato. Are you sure this is not a joke? Everyone looked horrified, dumbfounded. The issue is. Lathan, how old is this year? They never ignored the terrifying fact that Lathan was only seven years old. Doesn't this mean, at the age of seven and a half, Lathan can surpass the naval headquarters Colonel Pokato? God, is it possible? Everyone stared wide-eyed, looking at Lathan's young and immature back with horror. It's so shocking to the world. Pokato's words directly detonated the atmosphere of the entire warship. A seven and a half year old monster whose strength is far superior to Colonel Marine. Just imagine, everyone present couldn't help but shudder and their scalps went numb. Subvert cognition. Their worldview was defeated by these words from Pokato. Half a year, Lathan raised his hand to wipe the sweat stains on his forehead, and looked at Pokato in front of him with a meaningful smile on his face, without saying too much. Half a year, Colonel Pokato, you think highly of me. Have to say, the time you judged is a bit too long. I'm afraid I can't afford to wait. Actually, Colonel Pocato, you can't imagine that at all. It doesn't take half a year to surpass you, Colonel Pocato. At most, a month. Do not. It only takes half a month, and there is more than enough rubbing. It's just that Lathan didn't say the above words. After all, these words really hit Pocato too much. Anyway, Pocato is also a dignified naval headquarters colonel, no matter how bad he is, he still has to save some face for the other party. My thoughts turned. Lathan put all these complicated thoughts behind him. There are more important things waiting for him. Think here. Lathan's eyes twinkled, and there was a strong sense of anticipation in his heart. The time for the third check-in should be almost completed. Finally, it's time for a happy check-in again. Chapter 36 Is this the legendary genius? I have learned a lot. One more. Advertisement. Yes. After a day of accumulation, it's time to sign in for the third time. And this is what Lathan is most looking forward to. Checked in for the first time and got Conqueror's Hockey. Signing in for the second time, I got Sword Skill LV5. So, sign in for the third time, and what kind of abilities can you get in the ability gift pack that you can systematically sign in? This point, the current Lathan is still unknown. But this is still unstoppable, and there are many emotional waves in his heart, such as anticipation and excitement. Want to surpass Pokato within half a month. The only thing Lathan can rely on, of course, is the system. Only the system can give Lathan such confidence and confidence. It's all gone, it's all gone. Pokato retracted the saber in his hand to his waist, and waved his hand, quickly dispersing the crowd of marines who gathered around and watched. The battle has since come to an official end. But all the marines seemed unsatisfied, and left the deck with a blank face. Although they left, the scene of Lathan fighting Pokato just now was deeply imprinted in their minds. Of course they dare not imagine. Lathan, who was only seven years old, was able to fight so fiercely with the majestic naval headquarters Colonel Pokato. It's incredible. What's even more frightening is that. Pokato's last words were blunt. In half a year, Lathan will surpass himself. These words immediately detonated all marines in the entire warship. It filled everyone with shock and disbelief. Until everyone dispersed. Pokato's words became the main topic of discussion among people. Can you believe it? What Colonel Pocato said just now. Half a year, in just half a year, Mr. Lathan can fully surpass Colonel Pocato. This is really shocking and unbelievable. Mr. Lathan, you are only seven years old. Seven and a half years old, is it enough to completely surpass Colonel Pocato? What does that mean? Everyone was deeply shocked by this. Their thinking limits their imagination. Anyway. They dare not imagine that picture. Advertisement. A seven and a half year old child, completely surpassing the picture of Pokato. This is too scary. Balumbo, let's go too. Kevi took a deep breath, calming down from shock. Go, where are you going? Belumbo was stunned. Train. Kevi looked serious and solemn. Kirby, are you still thinking about surpassing Mr. Lathan? Belumbo's eyes widened, his tone suspicious. No way, no way. Kevi, don't you give up. Want to outdo Mr. Lathan? This level of difficulty is simply harder than ascending to the sky. Beyond Mr. Lathan, this, I haven't dared to think about it for a long time. Kebby smiled bitterly and shook his head, I just want to become stronger, so that I won't be pulled too far away by Mr. Lathan. As for surpassing Mr. Lathan, this is nonsense. In half a year, you can surpass Colonel Pokato. How can I compare such a terrifying growth rate? This is not just asking for trouble. As expected, there is an unreachable gap between people since birth. Besides, Mr. Lathan, he's a monster. Heard the words. Belumbo also nodded in agreement, his tone full of amazement. Yeah, I never expected that Colonel Pocato would make such a high evaluation of Mr. Lathan. If it's true what Colonel Pocato said, wouldn't it be? A seven and a half year old naval headquarters colonel. Think about it. Both of them just felt the scalp tingling. Seven and a half year old colonel naval headquarters. This is very scary. Total horror of the world. Unimaginable. Things that they didn't even dare to dream about in their dreams happened before their eyes. This undoubtedly has a serious impact on their cognitive outlook. The two gradually left the deck. At this moment, there are only a few people left on the deck. 
Compared with the gathering of hundreds of people just now, the deck now looks a bit deserted. Open black lens bracket ding. Close black lens bracket. The cumulative time of the detection system has reached 24 hours. Advertisement. Sign in is available. Please host to confirm again. Do you want to sign in? Close black lens bracket. The sound of the system sounded very abruptly in Leifen's head. Really? Coming. Leifen's eyes sparkled brightly, and the expression on his face became expectant and excited. Turn. He said to Pokato beside him. Colonel Pokato, after the duel with you, I realized something again, so I went back to the room to think about it myself. After I finish thinking about it, I will have another duel with you. This will be used to test for sure how much my strength and swordsmanship have improved. Before Pokato could react, Leifen quickly left and put him back in the room. Watching Leifen leave, Pokato froze. I see. Garp walked to Pokato's side step by step, and asked with some confusion. This kid is frizzy, what did he tell you? How did he run so fast? He, he said. Pokato's throat was dry, and he couldn't help swallowing. It seems that after the duel with me just now, he realized something and wanted to go back and think about it for himself. After thinking about it, he will continue to fight with me to test his own strength and improvement level. The words fell. Garp also stayed. What? What the hell? Another harvest. Isn't the harvest and comprehension in the battle not enough for him to digest? After the battle is over, how can he still comprehend something? How many heads does this brat have? Both Garp and Pokado were a little confused. Good guy. Emotion. Is this the legendary genius? Now, they are truly knowledgeable. Chapter 37 The Soaring Level of Swordsmanship. Sword Skill LV10. Second Update. Advertisement. Return to the room. Leifen immediately checked the system prompts. It has accumulated a full day. You can sign in anytime. Before signing in, Leifen was extremely excited, with countless guesses and thoughts in his mind. The third time I sign in, what abilities will I be given? Leifen is deeply looking forward to this. Without the slightest hesitation. Then, he thought. System, start the third check-in. The order has just been given. The sound of the system responded immediately, circling from Leifen's mind. Open black lens bracket sign in successfully. Close black lens bracket. Open black lens bracket congratulations to host, you got the ability gift package for sign in rewards, close black lens bracket. Do you want to open the ability gift package? Close black lens bracket. Everything worked out with ease. With the previous two experiences, Leifen naturally showed extraordinary familiarity with the system's check-in process. The steps and other aspects are already very familiar. As always, throughout the process, there was no change at all. What can you get out of this ability gift pack? This made Leifen very curious. Then, in the next second, Leifen silently said again, open the ability gift package. Just as Leifen waited expectantly, time seemed to stand still. Every second becomes extremely slow. Then, the sound of the system suddenly sounded. No warning. Ability gift pack is opening. Open black lens bracket enabled. Close black lens bracket. Coming. Leifen's eyes twinkled, and he waited quietly. Whether one's own strength can usher in a huge leap depends on the ability to open the third gift pack. Hope. What the ability gift pack unlocked this time is not the ability of some trash. Open black lens bracket ding. Close black lens bracket. Open black lens bracket congratulations to host, you got, swordsmanship LV5 feet from the ability gift pack. Close black lens bracket. The beautiful and incomparably pleasant voice of the system diffused in Leifen's mind, lingered and buzzed in his ears, and never dissipated. Kindness, fencing, and many more, unexpectedly. Is it swordsmanship? Leifen froze for a moment. Immediately, waves of excitement and ecstasy surged into the atrium, filled the limbs of the body, and flowed to every corner of the body. Our fencing. The third time I checked in, I didn't expect to get the same ability as the second time I checked in. This surprised Leifen. He was still thinking about what new but unfamiliar abilities he would unlock. Never thought about it. Still familiar with swordsmanship. Also, the level of swordsmanship has been increased by LV5 at one time. The ability to unlock is exactly the same as the ability gift pack obtained from the second sign in, without any change. The first check in reward is conquerors. The second time, it was sword skill LV5. Unexpectedly, the third time, it was sword skill LV5. Coincidence. Or luck. Advertisement. Or, predestined. Unexpectedly, I still have the life of Emperor O. Leifen was so excited that it was difficult to calm down. Although he does expect to be able to unlock a brand new and unfamiliar ability, and it is the kind that is very helpful for his own strength improvement. However, what he got was actually swordsmanship. That's enough for Leifen. Swordsmanship, although it seems simple, is not outstanding. But in fact, swordsmanship can essentially make Leifen's strength usher in a huge leap and transformation. Simple, but very functional. It is of great help to the improvement of Leifen's strength. Sword skill level 5, signing in this time did not disappoint me. Compared with Conqueror's hockey, Leifen cares more about the improvement of sword skills. Conquerors, after all, can only clean up some little people. When colliding with the strong, it still depends on the level of swordsmanship. Undoubtedly, Leifen is very satisfied with the ability acquired in this third check-in. Not too many bells and whistles. Swordsmanship is the simplest and most practical means of fighting. 
What Leifen has been pursuing is the improvement of strength, not those fancy tricks. Of course, with the mentality of not rejecting anyone, Leifen will not mind no matter how capable he is. As the saying goes, too many skills don't overwhelm you. I just boasted to Colonel Pocketo that I would fight another duel with him to verify how much my own strength has improved. I never thought about it. Now, the third time I sign in, I have been given sword skill LV5. Really, Yuan, it's too wonderful. This time, Colonel Pocato, it may not take half a month for me to surpass you. Because, even I didn't expect that my luck would explode like this. A meaningful smile spread across Leifen's face. I vaguely remember. Colonel Pocato said, it takes half a year for him to surpass the other party. Half a year, do you really need it? Thinking of this, Leifen's smile became even more playful. Colonel Pocato, you are still too young. How can you use years of experience to judge and analyze a person who is cheating? You have always had a very huge misunderstanding of a person who is cheating. So, Colonel Pocato, I really look forward to the next time I face you. By the time, you will definitely try to see how much my sword skills have improved this time. At that time, you will be amazed by this. Do not. Even everyone will feel incredible about it. Among them, Garp. Old man, you keep talking. It is impossible for me to have never been exposed to swordsmanship before, so that in just a few days, my swordsmanship level has grown from a rookie to this level. Then, next, please open your eyes and look carefully. It's just one day before and after, and my swordsmanship level has ushered in another huge leap forward. How do you explain this? Could it be, you still want to keep emphasizing that I've been hiding everything? That doesn't make sense. Leifen could already imagine the stunned expressions of Garp and Pocato when he showed his current level of swordsmanship. When I told the truth before, no one chose to believe it. This is just great. In a short period of time, my own level of swordsmanship has achieved a huge leap in sword. For this phenomenon, what kind of reasons should Garp and Pocato find to forcefully explain? Advertisement. That's really exciting. Subsequently, a warm current appeared out of thin air, washing every meridian in Leifen's body. This feeling is very familiar to Leifen. It was the same feeling when I signed in for the second time and got sword skill LV5. Therefore, Leifen's ups and downs of mood were not too violent, and he didn't resist this feeling. He chose to close his eyes slightly and feel the changes in his body carefully. At the same time, a lot of knowledge about swordsmanship appeared out of thin air, like a raging tide, all of this knowledge poured into his head at once. Moment. All feelings gradually fade away. The amount of knowledge pouring into his head gradually subsided. Leifen opened his eyes, their eyes sparkling with brilliance. Got stronger. Yes, he could feel it very clearly. My body is completely different from the previous moment. In particular, all cognitions and concepts of swordsmanship, as well as all aspects of knowledge such as experience, techniques, and skills, are integrated into Leifen's body as if he was born with it. It can be said to be self-taught. Everything is a matter of course. My swordsmanship has become stronger and stronger. Leifen clenched his fists, his excitement uncontrollable. This feeling of becoming stronger made him intoxicated and deeply fascinated. Become stronger in an instant. There is absolutely no need to accumulate over time. Just for a moment, Leifen's swordsmanship level has ushered in a huge change. However, this is not force-feeding to become stronger. More like, in a short moment, Leifen experienced several years or even decades of sword practice, and finally obtained the improvement of these swordsmanship attainments. Quite a while, I calmed down my excitement a little bit. Only then did Leifen react, and quickly check the changes on his property panel. System, bring up the properties panel. Open black lens bracket host. Leifen close black lens bracket. Strength, 10 plus 3. Speed, 11 plus 2. Physical strength, 9 plus 3. Skills, Swordsmanship LV10 plus LV5 Conquerors have killed 1. Open black lens bracket skill point. 0 close black lens bracket. The changes in the property panel did not exceed Leifen's expectations. Everything is under his control. 2 gift bags, 2 swordsmanship LV5. Then, the two are superimposed. Finally, what emerges is. Sword skill LV10. And this is the current level of swordsmanship that Leifen possesses. At this moment, even Leifen himself is completely unable to accurately judge what level his current swordsmanship level has reached. All in all, anyway, in less than a few minutes, Leifen's level of swordsmanship attainments can be described with the word, soaring. Chapter 38 Two Days, Reborn. Open black lens bracket third watch close black lens bracket. Advertisement. Sword skill level 10. So, what level can my swordsmanship reach? Compare it to Colonel Pocato. Leifen began to think in his mind. When the sword skill is LV5, Leifen is obviously far inferior to Pocato. But now that the sword skill has been raised to LV10, it's hard to say. As for whether it can defeat Pocato, Leifen feels that this is still a bit unrealistic. Fighting is not just a competition of sword skills. In the life and death battle, the competition is about swordsmanship, strength, speed, and physical strength. Only by comparing all aspects can one judge who is stronger and who is weaker. And Leifen's age is in the growth stage, compared to a middle-aged man in his heyday, naturally he will be much inferior to Pocato in terms of the advantages and disadvantages of his congenital body. It is an indisputable fact that Leifen is far inferior to Pocato in terms of strength, speed, and physical strength. 
but if it's just a competition of pure swordsmanship? Then, can the swordsmanship attainments I currently control be able to shape Pokato? At this point, Leifen thinks it is still possible. No matter what, this level of swordsmanship is not inferior to Pokato's. In this regard, Leifen has been satisfied. After all, his own swordsmanship, from rookie to entry, only took less than two days. With such a level of swordsmanship, what is there to be dissatisfied with? It's still a long time, don't worry about the duel with Colonel Pokato. Wait for a while, wait for another two days, then you can confront Colonel Pokato head on. Let me go through the fourth check-in and see what kind of ability I can get out of the fourth check-in. Leifen made up his mind. Sunny. The golden light scattered from the window and reflected on the floor, the light Madara shone, and the afterglow gradually spread to Leifen's body, filling the whole room with warmth. Dot dot dot. Sailing on the sea is always very boring. Time passed like a snail, moving forward at a turtle speed. Looking around, you can only see the boundless sea, with no reference. Dull. Tedious. And, it's very disturbing. I don't know where I have gone, and I don't know which sea area I have fallen into. If you don't have an excellent navigator, it is really easy to lose your sense of direction when navigating a ship on the sea, and thus fall into many dangerous and dangerous sea areas in the sea. Warship. Sailing on the sea. Target Marineford. Utilize advanced technology and race your way to the naval headquarters on the comm belt. That's it. Day to day. Time flies. Another two days passed. Crash. The sea was rippling with ripples and waves. Advertisement. A huge warship pushed aside the seawater on both sides of the sea surface. The sea water quickly rippled and spread to both sides, and the waves formed ripples, hitting the distant sea one wave after another. The flying flag is engraved with a seagull pattern similar to a scale, which symbolizes absolute fairness, justice and peace. This is a flag unique to marine. The overall picture of the warship's hull looks a little funny. The front part looks like a pug biting a bone. Warship deck. A group of marines are busy, walking around the warship, looking very noisy. Hundreds of marines are all performing their duties, and none of them dare to leave their posts without authorization. Every marine who can enter this warship is an elite. By the way, why haven't you seen Leifen in these two days? Garp stood on the deck fence, looking at Pokato beside him with a strange expression. Heard the words, Pokato also showed a puzzled look. Vice Admiral Garp, I rarely see him. It seems that he is alone in the room except for eating and drinking. The words fell. Garp was lost in thought. At this time, Pokato couldn't help but said, Vice Admiral Garp, could it be that he is really thinking about the gains he got after the duel with me two days ago? Don't even mention it, it's very possible. Garp stroked his chin thoughtfully. However, what kind of harvest needs to be pondered for two days and has not figured out why? It's beyond Garp's comprehension. Could it be possible? Really gave this kid, figured out something incredible. It took only two days, and I couldn't even see the shadow of a person. If it was someone else, Garp would have been skeptical. But Leifen, this guy can't be seen through ordinary eyes. Maybe, I really figured out some incredible gains for this monster. Monsters are always different from ordinary people. Also, he can always do something that shocks ordinary people. Are there still few similar examples happening to Leifen? Vice Admiral Garp, do you want to ask? Pokato asked. No need, let's see what this little brat can come up with. Two days, if he really figured out some incredible gains. So, with his talent, we will probably see it from him very soon. In the past two days, he has figured out what kind of stuff, and how much has he improved in his own strength and swordsmanship level. It's really exciting. A smile crept across Garp's face. As Garp said, these two days, Leifen's harvest can be described as very rich. And, the improvement of Leifen's strength can definitely be said to subvert the cognition of Garp and Pakato. Dot dot dot. In the room, Leifen's eyes twinkled and his mind skipped a beat. System, check in for the fifth time. Advertisement. Yes, Leifen has now accumulated to the fifth check in. The fourth time I signed in, I successfully signed in yesterday. And it has paid off. It can be said, Leifen's strength has ushered in a huge transformation in these two days. In short, in two days, it was like being reborn. Open black lens bracket sign in successfully. Close black lens bracket. Open black lens bracket congratulations to host, you got the ability gift package for sign in rewards, close black lens bracket. Do you want to open the ability gift package? Close black lens bracket. Open. Leifen didn't hesitate. Ability gift pack is opening. Open black lens bracket enabled. Close black lens bracket. Open black lens bracket ding. Close black lens bracket. Congratulations to host. Get, conquerors have killed three feet from the ability gift pack. Close black lens bracket. The system's voice soon rang out, lingering in Leifen's mind. Call. He let out a heavy breath, and there was no great emotional turmoil on his face, neither too excited nor disappointed. In general, although this ability is not very good, it is not bad. Fairly so-so, quite satisfactory. Belong to the acceptable range. Soon, a warm current washed over Leifen's body. After some transformation of the system. Leifen quickly started looking at its properties panel. System. Check the properties panel. Open black lens bracket host. Leifen close black lens bracket. Strength. 30 plus 2O. Open black lens bracket speed. 31 plus 2O close black lens bracket. Physical strength. 
29 plus 20. Skills. Swordsmanship LB10. Conquerors have killed 4 plus LB3. Open black lens bracket skill point. Zero close black lens bracket. That's right. This is Lathan's current physical attribute panel after two days of precipitation, after accumulating the fourth check-in and the fifth check-in. Chapter 39 Confront Colonel Pocato head on. Open black lens bracket for more close black lens bracket. Advertisement. It is not the conquerors rewarded by the fifth check in that makes Lathan's strength reborn. It's the reward for signing in for the fourth time. One off, giving Lathan a huge leap in the three panels of strength, speed, and stamina. More than doubled. It almost tripled. All attributes plus 2 Strength, speed, stamina. Three panels, all plus 2 0. This is the main reason why Lathan's strength ushered in a new transformation. As for the conquerors for the fifth check in reward, it's purely just to add a little flair. The most important thing is the reward for signing in for the fourth time. Over the past two days, Lathan's strength has made a very obvious leap. In addition to swordsmanship, my three panels of strength, speed, and physical strength have also been greatly improved. The overall strength has ushered in a qualitative leap in sublimation. It's not just the swordsmanship that has been improved. Lathan's eyes twinkled, feeling darkly excited. With my current strength, if I go to confront Colonel Pocato. Presumably, it is no longer a problem, right? No matter what. Still have the power to fight. A real power of war. There is no need for Pocato to show any mercy. Lathan is already qualified to face Pocato. Only after the battle with Colonel Pocato can I make an accurate judgment. My current level of strength depends on what level this sea belongs to. Thought Lathan. Without an accurate benchmark, he was temporarily unable to accurately grasp his own strength. And Pokato is a good benchmark. It is used to measure the benchmark of what level one's own strength is in the sea. The sad Colonel Pocato didn't know yet. He is a majestic colonel of naval headquarters, and he is actually used as a benchmark for measuring strength. It's time to go out and see where the warship sailed. Lathan stretched his arms and stepped out the door. Oncoming. A golden halo fell from the edge of the sky. The hot sun is in the sky. The dazzling sunlight filled the air with a warm breath, shining on this side of the sea, and the ripples on the sea surface, the flickering light was even more eye-catching, like a large piece of gold shimmering. Blue sky, white clouds fluttering. Another sunny day. Along the way, Lathan met a lot of marines. When they saw Lathan, they all showed their inner respect and greeted them respectfully. Don't judge a person's status by his youth, but with strength. They respect Lathan, not because Lathan is Garp's grandson. And purely just, the strength of Lathan deeply impressed them. In particular, what Pokado said, in half a year, Lathan can surpass Pokado himself. This sentence immediately gave all marines a deeper understanding of the seven-year-old Lathan. Advertisement. They also understood more clearly what a terrifying genius monster Lathan is. Mr. Lathan. A man named Marine looked at Lathan with a smiling face, with a respectful expression and no neglect. In their eyes. Lathan. Not a child. It's a powerful man with a noble status and extremely strong strength. The rules of the sea are simple. Treat the strong, everyone will be respectful. This rule is also very suitable for Marine. Undoubtedly. In their eyes, Lathan is a strong man who should be admired. Although, Lathan is only seven years old. By the way, where is Colonel Pocato now? Lathan grabbed a random Marine to ask. He can't wait to have another duel with Pocato. It's not a sparring session. It's not sparring either. But, showdown. Official showdown. Without any hold back, the two sides went all out for a showdown. Colonel Pocato. He seems to be on deck. The Marine thought about it and told the truth. Deck. Lathan nodded and walked towards the deck step by step. The Marine who stayed on the spot scratched his head, with a puzzled look on his face. Mr. Lathan, what are you doing? You just finished retreat, and you're looking for Colonel Pocato in such a hurry. And many more, could it be? An astonishing guess immediately came to mind. No way, could it be that? Mr. Lathan, do you want to challenge Colonel Pocato again? God, this is too amazing. The Marine's eyes widened suddenly, with a shocked expression on his face. Ever since, the news spread. The entire warship was detonated again. Hundreds of Marines came here one after another after hearing the news, threw away their busy work, and rushed to the central area of the warship deck without stopping. For a while, the warship seemed particularly noisy. What happened? Kirby grabs a Marine and asks. It seems to say that Mr. Lathan's two-day retreat has been declared over. And just after leaving the retreat, Mr. Lathan will challenge Colonel Pocato again in person. Words just fell. Kevi and Belumbo stared wide-eyed. Oh my god, obediently, is this true? Advertisement. Mr. Lathan, do you want to challenge Colonel Pocato again? Of course, this kind of thing should not be missed. Walk. Kevi quickly grabbed Belumbo who was in a state of shock, and hurried towards the direction of the deck. At the same time, the center of the deck of a warship. Little devil, are you sure you want to challenge Pocato? Moreover, you want Pocato to fight with all your strength without holding back your hands. Garp looked at Lathan with a strange expression on his face. He was stunned. Say something. Lathan, who gave him the courage? Although Pocato is a little dish, but that is also for him Garp. With Pocato's strength, it can definitely be said to be first class in the Grand Line. Although it is not top-notch, it is definitely not weak. So, where does Lathan, 
who is only seven years old, have the courage to challenge Pokado. And the exaggeration is, the brat also said, let Pokado go all out. Sure, certainly. Lathan's eyes twinkled, and he nodded earnestly and expectantly. I'm afraid you've suffocated your brain through retreat. Gark shook his head speechlessly, then turned to look at Pokado beside him. Okay, Pokado, what do you think? Do you want to accept this challenge? Obviously, according to Garp, Lathan and Pokato, the two are completely two levels of contrast. No matter how talented Lathan is in swordsmanship, Garp never thinks that Lathan can surpass Pokato in such a short period of time. Is it possible? Of course not. Furthermore, the all-out duel, not only involves the factors of swordsmanship attainments. It will also involve the interference of all factors such as one's own strength, speed, physical strength, combat thinking, and combat experience. Every factor will seriously affect the outcome of a battle. Lathan the brat, I really don't know the heights of the sky and the depths of the earth. How dare you propose a decisive duel? But that's good too. People who have never experienced defeat will never know that there are people beyond others, and there is a sky beyond the sky. After this defeat, it must also allow Lathan, a brat, to reflect on himself and settle down a little bit. Avoid, because his talent is too outstanding, he is arrogant and arrogant. His personality really needs to be properly changed. Garp thought, let me go all out. Pokato also showed an excited expression, in that case, I accept this challenge. Chapter 40 A Battle with a Huge Age Difference Open Black Lens Bracket Fifth Watch Close Black Lens Bracket Advertisement Accept Accept Colonel Pocato Accept Mr. Lathan's Challenge Kevy's throat was dry, his eyes widened, and his expression was full of horror. Oh my god, Colonel Pocato, I really plan to go all out and have a duel with Mr. Lathan. How dare Mr. Lathan, he is only seven years old, how dare he challenge Colonel Pocato? A group of Marines heard heated discussions and boiling voices. They were shocked. First, Lathan, who is only seven years old, challenges the mighty naval headquarters Colonel Pocato. To know, Pocato's strength is not just as simple as an ordinary Colonel Marine. Being able to follow Garp for more than ten years, or even decades, as Garp's confidant and confidant, how could Pocato's strength be weak? An ordinary naval headquarters Colonel, of course, cannot be compared with Pocato. And today, what did they see? Seven-year-old Lathan challenges Pocato. Pocato, you're still fighting. This immediately made them unacceptable, and their moods were shocked. It's incredible, how many ages have you spanned in absolute terms? A seven-year-old, and Pokato is at least forty years old. A showdown with a difference of thirty years. One is in the immature growth period. And one is at the peak of its heyday. How to fight this? Mr. Lathan, are you too blindly confident? Could it be, does he really think he can beat Colonel Pokato? It's impossible. All agree, Lathan is no match for Pokato. The age gap is too great. If Lathan is given another half a year, the people present will not be able to judge who is strong and who is weak. But at least for now, by most accounts, Lathan's odds are slim. There is basically no possibility of defeating Pokato. Too reckless. Many Marines secretly sighed in their hearts. Although this battle has never started, they seem to have seen how it will end. All eyes were focused on the center of the deck. I see. Lathan had slowly drawn his katana. The blade is sharp, shining a dazzling halo in the sunlight. With the blade in hand, the smile on Lathan's face was a little restrained, and his eyes narrowed slightly. He quietly looked at Pokato in front of him, his expression became focused, and there was no emotion in his eyes, like a calm lake, very calm. Colonel Pocato, please. The corners of Lathan's mouth moved slightly. Advertisement. Be careful. If you say you will go all out, then I will not hold back. So, you have to be mentally prepared for this in advance. Pocato also took out the saber from his waist. He is a swordsman. A very penultimate swordsman. Swordsmanship is Pocato's strongest fighting method. Therefore, the battle between Lathan and Pocato can be said to be a duel between two swordsmen. Click to the end, Garp moved to the edge of the field to serve as the referee. He is not worried that there will be accidental injuries in this battle. Anyway, how can there be accidental injuries in a one-sided battle? Garp made up his mind. With Pokoto's strength, he can definitely crush the opposite Lathan. Nature. Garp believes that Pokoto is still very measured. Let's start. Pokoto raised the saber in his hand, and his whole body changed slightly. It's like changing from a gentle and elegant scholar to a general who slaughters all sides of the battlefield. The murderous aura was released from Pokato's body, spreading in all directions. Fierce, vigorous, a murderous aura emanated from Pokato's body. The atmosphere became depressing in vain. Even though the sun was shining, the air temperature here seemed to plummet and become a bit cold. Coming with the sea breeze. Make the coldness of the air more obvious. It's bitingly cold. Many of the marines were affected by this breath, and immediately had goosebumps all over their bodies, and the coldness swept through their hearts, making their bodies tremble uncontrollably. Are you going to start? A group of marines such as Kevi, Beru Meber, etc. focused their eyes, their words stopped abruptly, and they stared nervously at the battlefield ahead. It was a noisy environment just now. In an instant, it became extremely quiet. No sound. Colonel Pokato, you are stronger than I imagined. Lathan carefully felt the majestic sense of oppression released from Pokato's body, and couldn't help but sigh in his heart. But, that's good. No way, let this duel become boring. 
Looked up, Leifen looked at Pokato in front of him, the samurai sword in his hand shone coldly. A sharp edge that is unique to the swordsman gradually spread from Leifen's body, quickly sweeping every corner of the surrounding area. Two majestic auras collide with each other. Boom. Moment. Pokato made a move. With a kick of his feet, his figure turned into a flying arrow, almost about to pierce the sky. Advertisement. Fleeting. Pokato's entire body disappeared in place. Coming. The crackling sound came from the back of Leifen's ear. Turn around. Without any surprise, Leifen raised the katana in his hand, gently placed the blade horizontally in the direction of his right hand, and slammed it down against the seemingly empty air. Boom. A piercing sound suddenly sounded. The figure of Pokato appeared in the originally empty place. I see. Pokato holds the saber across his body, blocking the blade attack from Leifen. The blade rubbed against the blade, flashing a dazzling fire. The two never give in. Hum. The terrifying airflow exploded. The two majestic forces collided with each other, spreading a weak air current, centered on the two of them, it was released rapidly, and spread to farther areas. Around. Many of the uniforms on Marine's body were gently blown and rolled by this air current. Kindness. Are you aware of my offensive intentions in advance? Pokato, who was holding a saber, looked surprised and looked very surprised. He really didn't expect it. A sudden attack was blocked by Leifen. He was still thinking about ending this duel as soon as possible. Therefore, for this move, he used 70% of his own strength level. But it turns out, after all, it exceeded Pokato's expectations. This move was blocked by Leifen seemingly easily and without pressure. No way, no way. Colonel Pokato, don't you really want to kill me on the spot? Or, you still treat me like I was two days ago. Leifen looked at Pokato with a playful face. There's an old saying that treats you with admiration after three days of farewell. Although, it's only been two days since the last confrontation with you, Colonel Pocato. But, don't blame me for not warning you in advance. If you still insist on using the mentality you used to deal with me before to deal with me today, then you will lose miserably. Chapter 41 Strong Collision. Shock the audience. One more. Advertisement. Really, I should change my mentality, otherwise, if I continue to underestimate it, I might really lose to you. I have to admit that the speed at which your monster's strength is improving is simply unimaginable. Pokato's tone was very serious and solemn. The first short fight has already made him feel that Leifen is very strong. Compared with two days ago, it is countless times stronger. This discovery stunned Pokato on the spot. It took him a while to forcefully suppress the shock in his heart and many other emotional waves, but the remaining shock in his heart was still indelible. Unbelievable. Incredible. In just two days, the change in a person's strength can be so exaggerated. It's outrageous. If I'm not serious, I might really lose, this is not a joke. Pokato took a deep breath and quickly adjusted his mentality. Leifen. Strong. Much, much stronger than he imagined. Two days ago, he looked comfortable against Leifen. But today, it was just the first collision with Leifen, but Pokato realized a very shocking fact. That is, in two days, Leifen's strength has changed, it can be said that it has been completely reborn, like two different people. Unimaginable. How can a person's growth rate be so terrifying? But the fact, it happened in front of my eyes, let me witness it with my own eyes, I have to believe it all. Leifen, this fellow is a terrible monster. Pokato's thoughts surged, and his expression became more focused and dignified. Who dares to imagine? In just two days, Leifen has become so powerful. After only two days of retreat, her strength has ushered in an earth-shaking change. Who can emulate this? Anyway, based on Pokato's many years of experience, it was the first time in his life that he had heard of such a terrifying event that could be said to frighten the world. This moment, Pokato has a very deep understanding of Leifen's two-day retreat. Ever since, Pokato suppressed the contempt in his heart and put up all his energy, clenched the saber in his hand, his eyes were sharp, and he stared at Leifen expressionlessly, not daring to be careless or slack in the slightest. If you still underestimate Leifen, he felt, as Leifen said, he will really lose. The dignified colonel of naval headquarters will really lose to the seven-year-old Leifen in front of him. The atmosphere is depressing. Around, a group of marines did not dare to speak, and stared at the battlefield one after another. Their eyes could not move, they were concentrated, their expressions were full of apprehension and nervousness, and they were full of curiosity and anticipation. Has Colonel Pocato's attack been easily resolved? Kirby's lips trembled, his face full of horror. Even Garp, who is not far away, looks at Leifen differently. This kid, it's so simple and easy to defuse a surprise attack that Pokato was brewing. It's really not easy. Advertisement. In the past two days, it seems that he has not wasted his time, but has really learned something. What a horrible monster. In the battlefield, Leifen slowly raised the samurai sword in his hand, and the blade shone dazzlingly against the golden sunlight falling from the sky. Right, that is it. Colonel Pokato, being able to confront you in a serious state is my original goal. In this way, I can better test how much my strength has improved in the past two days. Moment. Leifen attacked. Boom. With a kick of his feet, his figure disappeared instantly. Very fast. It almost turned into a black afterimage, which made people unable to react at all. The speed is more than ten times faster than two days ago. Pokato was startled. His eyes rolled quickly, trying to catch Leifen's figure. Left. For a moment, the saber in Pokato's hand was extremely sharp and slashed to the left. 
Boom. The figure of Leifen appeared, holding a samurai sword and colliding strongly with the saber in Pokato's hand, causing bursts of dazzling flames to flicker. Hum. The terrifying air current, with the collision of the two as the center point, quickly diffused and spread in all directions. All the onlookers were enveloped by this air current. Cold. The biting coldness caused goosebumps to rise from everyone's body. Okay. What a terrible collision. Look at this posture. Mr. Leifen, you don't lose the wind at all. My god, is this true? Mr. Leifen, who is only seven years old, can fight Colonel Pocato so fiercely. He hasn't even shown any signs of defeat. It's unbelievable. A group of marines watched the changes on the battlefield in shock. They can't imagine. A duel with a huge age difference turned out to be even for a short time. All of this subverted their cognition. Boom. Leifen retreated a little, leaving a distance of about 10 meters from Pokato. The samurai sword in his hand condensed a purple halo, wrapped around the blade, making the sharp blade look extraordinarily bewitching. Cut. Call out. Call out. Three consecutive purple slashes were struck from the blade, aiming at the place where Pokato was standing. The terrifying slash arrived in front of Bakato. Compared to the Sea King's slash two days ago, the power is more than a dozen times more powerful. Isn't it a one-sided strength improvement, but an overall strength improvement? Not only is it just the attainments of swordsmanship, but even my own strength, speed and other aspects have ushered in a huge leap in these two days. Bokuto let out a heavy breath, but the shocking mood still couldn't calm down. Advertisement. If he hadn't fought Leifen himself, he wouldn't have believed this incredible event. Two days ago, Pokuto was still able to easily suppress Leifen even though he deliberately suppressed his own strength. But never expected. Two days later, all of this has ushered in a catastrophic change. The growth of Leifen's strength is terrifying. Lifting the saber in his hand, Pokato did not dare to neglect, and stared at the incoming slashes with his eyes. Saber cut off. Boom. Boom. The three slashes were positively resolved by Pokato. At the same time, Leifen's figure disappeared in place at some unknown time. Disappeared. Pokato's pupils shrank. Behind. Turning around, he immediately swung the saber in his hand and slashed backward. Hit. Empty. Empty. On the right, Colonel Pokato. Leifen appeared on Pokato's right hand with a smile, and the samurai sword in his hand aimed at Pokato's head and chopped off fiercely without mercy. What a surprise. Pokato frowned, and quickly retreated to block Leifen's blow with his saber. Unexpectedly, Leifen's blade suddenly changed course and swept towards Bakato's chest. A sideways, Pokato escaped without any risk. However, next second, Leifen kicked sideways, aiming at Pokato's waist. Kindness. Pokato's face changed slightly. Want to hide. But, it's too late. Then, boom. Leifen's kick hit Pokato's waist hard from the front. Chapter 42 Horrifying Growth Rate of Strength. Second Update. Advertisement. Pain. Sting. In an instant, the tingling sensation spread from the waist to the whole body, making Pokato's eyes widen and round, his face flushed, and it felt like the bones in his waist were about to fall apart. Although it will not break the bones. But this tingling sensation caused Pokato to groan, and his breath was slightly disturbed. This kick is simply impossible to guard against. Pokato didn't realize it at all. Moment. Boom. The terrifying force quickly spread from Bakato's waist to his entire body. Thereby, Bakato's body was like a kite with a broken string, it suddenly fell to the other side without any purpose, and the whole person flew ten meters away. Rumble. Finally, Pokato hit a wooden barrel with goods, smashed all the wooden barrels, and turned them into countless wooden fragments. With the impact of the air current, they rolled wantonly to all corners and danced lightly. Silence. The atmosphere suddenly became extremely strange. Sawdust fell from the sky and fell on the shoulders of many marine soldiers. But their expressions froze at the same time, their eyes widened and rounded, their expressions horrified, their throats dry as they stared at the scene in front of them. It is difficult for them to speak, and they cannot express their current violent ups and downs in words. Incredible. Colonel Pocato, unexpectedly, was kicked into the air. In this duel, Colonel Pocato was the first to show signs of defeat. How can that be? Everyone expressed deep disbelief at this. This unscientific, it's completely beyond common sense. I, what did I see? Kevi stood on the edge of the crowd, his lips trembling, his face full of shock. Colonel Pocato, was kicked flying. Belumbo's voice trembled. He rubbed his eyes, as if wondering if he was hallucinating. Not an illusion, everything that happened just now is true. Colonel Pocato, was literally kicked away by Mr. Lathan. A large pile of broken wooden barrels not far away, and many traces of wood chips left on the ground, are all displayed. The horrifying worldly scene they saw just now did not come from their hallucinations. I, my god, can you believe it? Colonel Pocato will be the first to be suppressed by Mr. Lathan. This, is it fake? Advertisement. This is the dignified colonel of naval headquarters. Suppressed by a child who was only seven years old. A group of marines were stunned. They doubted life on the spot. I have serious doubts about the scene I'm seeing now. Dignified colonel naval headquarters, crushing and beating a seven-year-old child. Who dares to believe this? It's too scary, obviously. The development of the war situation to such a point is completely unpredictable for all of them. Even, the battle situation is completely opposite to what they expected. Originally thought that Pokato would absolutely overwhelmingly suppress Leifen on the opposite side. After all, it was sloppy. 
Instead, it was Pokoto, who was suppressed by Leifen, who was only seven years old on the opposite side. Even Garp was stunned by the scene in front of him. What's going on? Pokoto, this guy is doing nothing. He was actually suppressed by this brat Leifen. Garp's eyes were wide and round, and he looked at Leifen with a samurai sword in his face. Can anyone explain it to him? What is this for? It wasn't like that two days ago. Two days ago, Leifen was almost hanged and beaten by Pokoto. But in just two days, who can explain? Why would Mao's progress in strength be so terrifying? This unscientific, Garp was a little dizzy. Seriously beyond the scope of common sense. It's only been two days. No matter how fast a person's strength improves, it can't be so outrageous, right? Two days ago, Leifen was hanged and beaten by Pokato, who suppressed his own strength. Two days later, Pokato, who broke out with all his strength, was beaten by Leifen. Who dares to think? Anyway, based on Garp's experience, they all expressed deep shock and bewilderment. Garp couldn't help but doubt life. Where did this monster come from? It's not just the growth of swordsmanship. Advertisement. Even my own strength, speed, combat experience, combat thinking, etc. Leifen, this kid, has been improved and surpassed in an all-round way. But here comes the problem. In two days, what did he go through? The speed at which this strength grows is too terrifying. If it was just the growth of pure swordsmanship, Garp would not be unacceptable. But Leifen's strength is obviously a comprehensive improvement. This is naturally beyond the range that Garp can accept. No matter how genius you are, it's not such an exaggeration, right? Two days. What can you do in just two days? Can be placed on Leifen's body. In two days, she actually achieved a complete transformation. This change in strength can be called a qualitative leap forward. On sight, everyone was dumbfounded. A pair of shocked and dull eyes stared at the immature and young figure holding a samurai sword in the battlefield, unable to move. Monster. This is an out-and-out -out monster. Only seven years old, but capable of suppressing the terrifying presence of Colonel Naval Headquarters. Rumble. There were bursts of noise from the ruins of the barrel. I see. Pocato walked out of the broken ruins, covered in a lot of broken sawdust, and the marine uniform on his body also showed many damaged marks and potholes, looking very embarrassed. Strong beyond imagination. The Leifen two days ago is completely different from the Leifen two days later. Pocato's breathing rhythm was a little messy, and his eyes were fixed on Leifen solemnly. He didn't care. However, Leifen's strength far exceeded his expectations. At this moment, Pocato's head was in a mess. He still can't figure it out. In just two days, how could a person's strength change be so outrageous? He is the level of strength of a naval headquarters colonel. But when faced with Leifen at this moment, he also felt strenuous. Dot dot dot. Chapter 43A Battle, Even with Pocato. Open black lens bracket third watch close black lens bracket. Advertisement. Yes, Pocato couldn't even dream of it. He is a naval headquarters colonel, and his strength is placed among the marine colonels, and he is definitely among the best, belonging to the top group. But when facing a seven-year-old child, he would feel strenuous. What a terrible thing this is. Pocato himself was stunned. It's only two days of retreat, how did you do it? Pocato looked at Leifen in horror. If it is possible. I also want to go to retreat for a while. Can you tell the trick? After retreating for Mao for two days, his strength has undergone an earth-shaking change. This is completely against scientific common sense. Step by step, Pocato returned to the battlefield, but when he looked at Leifen, his eyes were full of caution and fear. This moment, of course he already knew. What a terrifying monster the Leifen in front of me is. If you don't try your best, you may lose miserably. The tingling pain in his waist all the time reminded Pocato. Leifen's strength has seriously threatened him. Colonel Pocato, are you all right? Leifen lifted the katana in his hand, and looked sideways at Pocato with a smile. This kick is really ruthless. Pocato rubbed his waist, still feeling the tingling pain, and couldn't help complaining. Then, the battle broke out again. Without warning. Pocato launched a strong attack. Take the initiative. Boom. Boom. The collision of the blade and the blade flashed a dazzling fire. Hum. The majestic and majestic collision airflow quickly spread in all directions with the two of them as the center, blowing and rolling the uniform clothes of the group of marines watching. Okay. So fast. I can't see clearly, the movements of the two of them fighting. Only after images can be seen. Both of them are so strong. Advertisement. A group of marines were horrified, their throats were dry and their eyes were wide open. They couldn't catch the figures of Leifen and Pokato in the middle of the battlefield. Only Garp can clearly see the movement of the battlefield. Pokato, can't take Leifen. This idea came to Garp's mind. Make him utterly horrified. As his confidant and confidant, Garp is of course well aware of Pokato's strength. But Garp couldn't imagine it after all. As strong as Pokato, he couldn't take down the seven-year-old Leifen. Obviously two days ago, the battle situation did not show this trend. Pokato two days ago could easily abuse Leifen. Just the past two days. Pokato went all out, but at most he could only compete with Leifen, and he couldn't gain an advantage in the battle in a short time. Who dares to imagine this? Too exaggerated. The speed at which Leifen's strength grows is unbelievable. As expected of a monster. Garp thought to himself. Boom. Boom. The battle is very intense. Shave. Porkato was forced to use Marine Six styles. 
his figure disappeared in place. Next second, Hakuto stood directly behind Leifen, the saber in his hand slashed. But Leifen seems to have eyes behind his back, holding a knife in his right hand to block the position behind him. Boom. The two blades collided. With a flash of Leifen's figure, he quickly distanced himself from Pakato. Marine Six Styles. Really practical fighting skills. Sooner or later, I will learn. Leifen narrowed his eyes slightly. And from the moment first learned Marine Six Styles, the Pokato in front of him can also announce that he has officially surpassed him. Now, Pokato, who fully displays Marine Six Styles, is no more than comparable to Leifen. To know. Advertisement. Leifen has been fighting so far, relying on pure swordsmanship, as well as physical strength, speed and his own reaction ability. There aren't many practical combat techniques. Not like Pokoto, with Marine Six Styles, he can prepare an offensive in many ways. But even so, Leifen, can still be inseparable from Pokoto. This is already quite shocking. Boom. The force of the explosion pushed Leifen and Pokoto away respectively, and retreated more than 10 meters away. From beginning to end, Leifen didn't have any wounds on his body, but his clothes were scratched a lot. On the opposite side, Pakato, apart from being kicked hard in the waist by Leifen, never received two serious injuries. The battle between the two showed a flat situation. See here, the many marines around are even more shocking. Colonel Pakato, it seems, can't take Mr. Leifen. Mr. Leifen, who is only seven years old, is so strong that he can be evenly matched with Colonel Pakato. This is incredible, in a battle, the two are tied. Mr. Leifen, who is seven years old, and Colonel Pakato, who is nearly forty years old, are the two tied. I vaguely remember that Mr. Leifen two days ago was still being instructed by Colonel Pakato on how to use swordsmanship in actual combat. But two days later, Mr. Leifen was on par with Colonel Pakato. All Marines were dumbfounded. Can anyone explain to them? What happened in the past two days? Why does a person's strength progress, in just two days, be so terrifying and exaggerated? This is too subversive cognition. Only two days before and after. But what they saw was a complete transformation of a person's strength. Is that human being? Is this terrifying growth rate of strength really something that humans can do? Chapter 44 The strength has reached the level of Colonel Marine. Open black lens bracket for more close black lens bracket. Advertisement. For sure. Forced to retreat, Hakuto took a deep breath and stared at Leifen, with the strength Leifen has now, there is no doubt that he already has the strength level of Colonel Marine. And, among Colonel Marine, Leifen's strength can be said to be among the best. Can fight with him evenly. This kind of strength is absolutely rare among naval headquarters colonels. The scary thing is, Leifen, seven years old this year. At the age of seven, he allowed his own strength to reach the threshold of Colonel Marine. How horrible is this? Anyway, Pokoto was completely unimaginable before. A monster of the strength of a seven-year-old Colonel Marine. Can't help it. Pokoto recalled what he said two days ago. Half a year. Beyond me. How can this take half a year? In total, it's only two days. Pokoto couldn't help complaining in his heart. In two days, I surpassed myself. This was something that Pokoto never expected. Even though the facts were in front of him, he still had to express his deep disbelief. The strength of Colonel Marine, who was seven and a half years old, is already unbelievable. It's good now. It directly became the strength level of a seven-year-old Colonel Marine. Where did this monster come from? Also let people live. Suddenly, Pokato, who was hit hard, only felt that he was living in this world. Perhaps this in itself was an extremely humble and humble thing. In contrast to Leifen, he has lived in vain all his life. Okay, the battle is over here. Garp intervened in the battlefield at this time, officially ending the duel. If you continue to fight, the result will not change much. Leifen's strength and Pokato's strength are already very close. In a short period of time, it is obviously impossible for the two to decide whether to win or lose. Ended. Hundreds of marines were shocked, looking at Leifen who put away his katana with complicated eyes. Up until now, the shock in their hearts still couldn't cool down. This battle really opened their eyes. Even. Subvert their cognitive view. Their worldview is facing the fate of collapse following this incident. Advertisement. It is simply shocking to the world. A seven-year-old child, unexpectedly successfully fought to a tie with a dignified naval headquarters colonel. Who dares to imagine this? Mr. Leifen, it's terrible. Belumbo's lips trembled. Yes. Kebby also nodded involuntarily, his eyes were absent-minded, and he said in a tone full of horror, this duel will end in a tie. Seven-year-old Leifen, against naval headquarters colonel Pakato. It turned out to be a tie. Previously, no one could have predicted this ending. Even Garp couldn't imagine it. My grandson, Leifen, has undergone such a terrifying change in strength in just two days. Hi, Ty, amazing. Doesn't that mean, Mr. Leifen, who is seven years old, already possesses the strength of Colonel Naval Headquarters? My god, this this, everyone was dumbfounded. This terrible thing, like a heavy object suddenly knocked on their heads, made their whole heads buzz and their minds became chaotic. Only seven years old, already has the level of strength of Colonel Naval Headquarters. What is this concept? Given time, how far can this monster grow? Can't fathom. The scary thing is, two days ago, Leifen seemed so struggling against Pokoto. But just two days passed. The duel between the two showed a tie. 
The contrast is really too strong. Two days before and after, how could the gap be so big? Don't say they can't understand. As the party concerned, Hokuto was even more confused, and his whole head was still blank. He couldn't think of it at all. What has Leifen experienced these two days? How can a person's strength grow so exaggerated? A draw, a smile appeared on Leifen's face, and he slowly put away the katana in his hand. He is already very satisfied with this result. Don't expect to completely surpass Pokato in two days. But Leifen is content to be able to equalize himself with Pokato in two days. Now that it's all tied. Advertisement. So, can it be far behind to surpass Pokato? In Leifen's view, this should be a recent thing. It couldn't be easier to surpass Pokato. Just wait for the next check in time. Colonel Pokato, remember the last time you said that it would take half a year to surpass you? Do you remember what you said? Leifen smiled playfully and looked at Pokato with great interest. Half a year, Colonel Pokato, you really think highly of me. This moment, do you still believe in this? In two days, I've already had an equal share with you. So how long will it take for the distance to surpass you? One day, two days, think here. Leifen smiled even wider. It seems to have a feeling. Pakato looked at Leifen suspiciously and strangely, and quickly looked away, only to feel that the old man blushed, and his face was a little bit embarrassing. Of course he didn't forget. Those comments I just told Leifen two days ago. Judging by his years of experience, it will take half a year for Leifen to surpass himself. These words, spoken from Pokato at the time, were completely fine. Even so, it's seriously overstating Leifen's talent. But these words can be put into today. That's a serious slap in the face. This moment, Pokato only felt that his face was a little red and swollen from the beating. The slap came too fast. It was so fast that Pokato didn't even expect it. His words, just two days later, were severely dismantled. Chapter 45 So, this brat is really new to swordsmanship. Open black lens bracket fifth watch close black lens bracket. Advertisement. At the age of seven, he has the strength level of a naval headquarters colonel. Oh my god, I always feel that things are developing like a dream. Mr. Lafin, it's a tie with Colonel Pocato. The onlookers expressed their inner shock. Only seven years old, but it already has the level of strength of Colonel Marine. What does it mean? Such a terrifying talent. Give the other party a little more time to grow up, and what realm can they reach? They can't think of it. I can't even imagine it. Such terrible things happened right in front of their eyes. Mr. Lafin, is he still human? Kebby's throat was dry and he couldn't help but speak. I still have a deep memory, the scene where Mr. Lafin confronted Colonel Pocato two days ago. Belumbo's eyes were filled with horror. Two days ago, Mr. Lafin was hanged and beaten. Two days later, he has grown to the point where he can be evenly matched with Colonel Pocato. Kirby, can you imagine? A few days ago, Mr. Lafin participated in Vice Admiral Garp's devil training with us. At that time, Mr. Lafin was even much weaker than us. Mention this matter. Kevy couldn't help but widen his eyes, unable to speak for a while. After being reminded by Belumbo, of course he remembered the time when he first met Lafin, and the period when he and the other party participated in devil training. The other party, at that time, looked like a novice, far worse than them. But so far, only a few days have passed. The changes in Lafin are like reborn. Already far surpassed them, surpassed countless realms above them. It can be said, Kebi and Belumbo are the witnesses who watched Lafin grow at a terrifying speed. Grunt, Kebi swallowed, feeling wildly shocked. It was difficult for both of them to calm down. The battle is over though. But the process and result of this battle shocked all the marines present. I can't even dream of it. Pokato, the majestic colonel of naval headquarters, is even as good as a seven-year-old child. It's amazing. The audience is still very quiet. A pair of eyes full of shock, looking at the young and immature figure in the battlefield, holding a samurai sword, unable to move, eyes full of admiration. Moment. The atmosphere is detonated. The quiet atmosphere directly transformed into unparalleled noise. God, what did I see? Mr. Lafin, a tie with Colonel Pocato. It's incredible. Lafin was born, only seven years old. There was a lot of talk. Put away the saber in your hand. Pokato rubbed his waist and looked at Lafin with a painful face. Lafin, you are really ruthless, you don't show mercy at all. To date, there was still a sharp pain in his lower back. Although the bones are not broken, it must take a few days of recuperation to recover from the lower back injury that suffered Lafin's foot. After all, I'm facing you, Colonel Pocato. If you don't take it seriously, I'm afraid I will be defeated by you at any time. Furthermore, Colonel Pocato, at the beginning, you wanted to kill me in seconds and end the battle as quickly as possible. At that time, this scared me a lot. Lafin smiled and put away the katana in his hand. The battle is over here. Advertisement. It ended with a tie. A fight, a tie. Lafin tried his best to shake the majestic naval headquarters Colonel Pokato. Pokato, a Grandmaster Marine Six Styles, and penultimate Marine Colonel who was very skilled in swordsmanship. But it was tied by Lafin with skilled swordsmanship abruptly. This ending surprised even Lafin himself. I didn't expect it. The accumulation of two days. I have become so strong. Strong enough to shake Colonel Naval Headquarters head on. This fact makes Leifen happy and excited. To know. Leifen two days ago, still a long way from Pokato. 
But two days later, Leifen forcibly tied the distance. Has my strength reached the level of Colonel Marine? Leifen also has a very accurate understanding of its current strength. Pokato, this is not a simple Colonel Marine. As Garp's confidant and confidant, Pokato's strength, among the many Marine colonels in naval headquarters, is definitely among the best. And Leifen, since it can be evenly divided with Pokato. That means, Leifen's strength ranks among the many colonels in naval headquarters, and it is also among the best. Unconsciously, my strength is no longer weak. Even if I look at this sea, my current level of strength is enough for me to have the means to protect myself in this sea. And the strength I have now has only been improved in just five days. The cumulative number of system check-ins is only five times. Five check-ins allowed me to master such a powerful level of strength. Leifen's mood became extraordinarily cheerful. Sign in five times to make yourself equal to Colonel Naval Headquarters. So, what about 10 check-ins? What about 20 check-ins? If the cumulative number of check-ins reaches a hundred times, how strong will one's own strength be? To this, the more Leifen thought about it, the more he looked forward to it. Brat, suddenly a loud voice came to Leifen's ears. It's Garp. At this moment, Garp stood beside Leifen, with a strange expression on his face. I'm curious, what have you experienced in the past two days? This is also where Pokato expressed his curiosity. In two days, Leifen's strength has grown to the point of unbelievable exaggeration. What had to go through to cause such a terrible transformation of physical strength? Is it hard to accept my improvement in strength in the past two days? Leifen thought of an appropriate explanation, if you take what I said before and put it here today, you won't have a hard time accepting that my strength has grown faster in these two days. Garp froze for a moment. Pokado was also stunned. What do you mean? What was said before? What words? Pokado asked subconsciously, when I told the truth before, you didn't take it to heart at all. Now, I have to repeat it again. I, Leifen, have never touched swordsmanship before fighting Kirby. Fighting Kirby is the first time I have used swordsmanship. In this way, compared with today's situation, you should not seem so unacceptable. In short, the progress of my swordsmanship is not limited to the sudden leaps and bounds in these two days. Rather, my swordsmanship level has been improving by leaps and bounds since the moment I came into contact with swordsmanship, including now. So, don't make the mistake of thinking that only these two days are my transformation period. In fact, my swordsmanship and strength are changing every day. Such a pity. Advertisement. You don't believe what I said before. Finished. Leifen gradually left with a samurai sword, leaving only Garp and Pokato with an unfathomable back view. In Situ, Garp and Pokato looked at each other, their eyes widened, filled with deep shock and horror, and their thinking became chaotic. What the hell? Emotion. When Leifen fought against Kebi, was it really the first time he came into contact with swordsmanship? He hasn't lied all this time. He's telling the truth, but it's just been misinterpreted by us. So, this brat, is he really new to swordsmanship? So far, he hasn't been exposed to swordsmanship for a full week. Garp was stunned, not to mention, understood in this way, Leifen's strength improvement in the past two days is not so exaggerated. But after careful consideration, Garp was even more confused. Is it enough to be evenly matched with this guy Pokato if he has just been exposed to swordsmanship for less than a week? You liar. Is it possible? Anyway, Pokato's swordsmanship has been tempered and precipitated for decades before it has the level it is today. How could it be possible to reach this level in a short period of time? Genius. Which genius can do such a feat that shocks the world? As for Leifen, it took less than a week to completely surpass Pokato. How can that be? The word, genius, is not enough to describe it. This is simply a monster. Freak. Heterogeneous. Ka. Vice Admiral Garp. This, this. Pokato was so shocked that he even stuttered. So, has his own swordsmanship been surpassed by someone in less than a week? Pokato only felt his head buzzing, and fell into a state of deep doubt about life on the spot. Wait a minute, let me calm down first. Garp waved his hands, rubbed his forehead, and began to organize the messy thoughts in his head. Fake. Kindness. Good. This must be fake. However, for some reason. What the brat said just now seems so frankly reasonable. This immediately drove Garp crazy. Chapter 46 Message from Sengoku. Reroute to the capital of Seven Waters. Six more. Advertisement. It took a full half an hour. Garp calmed down. Beside, Pokato also has the same expression as Garp, generally the same. Only the two of them understand. What Leifen said just now is so shocking to the world. Based on the experience of the two of them, they almost doubted life. The other side, when the battle developed to this point, it was officially declared over. It was just the result of this battle that made everyone deeply shocked and unbelievable. Not long. With unparalleled shock, the many marines who were watching dispersed one after another, gradually left the deck of the warship, and returned to their posts. Kebi and Belumbo were also no exception. They were full of shocking emotions, their eyes were blank, and they left the deck seemingly in a daze. Today's duel, no doubt, simply and rudely refreshed the cognition of everyone present. A child who was only seven years old faced a naval headquarters colonel head-on, but he did not lose the wind at all, and ended in a tie. That is, today, they witnessed it, the birth of a terrifying monster who is only seven years old but has the strength to rival colonel naval headquarters. And this monster is Leifen, the grandson of Vice Admiral Garp. 
All of this has subverted everyone's worldview. Shocked Colonel Naval Headquarters at the age of seven. Such an unbelievable example, they have never heard of it. Rao couldn't help but be amazed by Garp's many years of experience. But what shocked Garp even more was that, what Lathan said when he left just now is the reason for overturning Garp's cognitive view. Call. Exhaling heavily, Garp stood on the empty deck and rubbed his temples, finally suppressing the shock in his heart. Vice Admiral Garp, you said. This, this, is it possible? Pokato looked at Garp in shock. He doesn't have Garp's strong psychological quality, Lathan's words are still deeply rooted in his heart, making him terrified. Then I ask you, can you think of a second explanation? How to explain, Lathan, the brat, his strength has improved so frighteningly in just two days. Garp glanced at Pokato beside him. This, Pokato was speechless for a moment. Unexpected. He couldn't think of any explanations and reasons that could be used to perfectly interpret the unimaginable and terrible events that are currently happening. As soon as he thought of this, Pokato shook his head. In that case, it's okay. With Garp words just fell. Pokato suppressed the horror in his heart, and said with a dry throat, Vice Admiral Garp, do you also believe what Lathan just said? This is inevitable, too scary. Have been in contact with swordsmanship for less than a week. What kind of international joke is this? If it were another person, Pokato would have slapped him on the spot. Have been in contact with swordsmanship for less than a week, and you are inseparable from fighting with yourself. A draw, have equal shares, who are you insulting? However, these words came from Lathan's mouth, which made Pokato's subconscious choice somewhat believe it. Even though he knew, these things sounded so subversive. But on second thought, advertisement. Just ask, are the horrors that happened to Lathan really rare? Of course a lot, on the contrary, that's simply not too much. Countless, it's been less than a week since I first got into swordsmanship. That's it, I can share the same with you. The old man is a little suspicious now, my grandson, I'm afraid it's not the reincarnation of a monster. Genius, this is not something a genius can do. Genius still belongs to the category of human beings. But my grandson, he has seriously exceeded the category of human beings. Garp's eyes go blank. This is a monster. A terrifying monster that even Garp can't help but be moved by. And many more. Suddenly, Garp thought of a key point. If what he said is true, doesn't that mean that? This brat, did he also get in touch with conquerors not long ago? He awakened and taught himself without a teacher, and finally successfully mastered conquerors hockey. Garp's eyes widened, and his mood fluctuated violently again. Obviously, he was startled again, obediently. What happened to my grandson is always so unbelievable. So in contrast, in two days, Lathan's strength has grown to be comparable to that of Pokato, and this matter does not seem to be so difficult to accept. After all, compared to everything else Lathan has done, this is drizzle at best. Garp and Pokato stood quietly on the deck, no one dared to disturb their thoughts. They were still digesting the shock of what Lathan had just said. Until, boo boo boo, the voice of the phone bug suddenly sounded, unique and ear-piercing, and quickly spread in all directions. Under this weird atmosphere, the voice of the phone bug was particularly prominent and piercing. Very loud. Moment. These bursts of sound disturbed the thoughts of Garp and Pokato. Phone bug. Who will come to me at this time? Garp frowned, feeling a little confused and curious. He took a deep breath, and it took a lot of effort to finally calm down the current shocking mood a little bit. Then, he quickly took out a delicate phone bug from his arms. The appearance and characteristics of the phone bug are particularly peculiar. It is actually wearing a small uniform specially made by Marine. This is an exclusive telephone bug specially manufactured by Marine and capable of mass production. Basically every warship comes standard with one. After Garp dialed the phone bug. On the opposite side of the phone bug, a familiar and steady voice soon came. Garp. Sengoku. Hearing this voice, Garp immediately recognized who it was. Garp's old comrade in arms for many years. Naval Headquarters Marshal. Buddha Sengoku. Like Garp, he is a well-known marine boss. At this moment, Garp's expression was very stunned, full of surprise, and then he couldn't help asking. Why are you contacting me suddenly at this time? I'm about to arrive in Marineford. Advertisement. By the way, Sengoku, don't you want to tell me that you don't have to go back to Marineford for now? I have to say that this time Garp's guess was very accurate. Next second, Sengoku said bluntly. You guessed it right, where are you sailing to now? I have a mission on hand for you. It just so happens that this mission has a lot to do with you. It is with this in mind that I entrust this task to you. You old fellow, don't mess things up. It took me a lot of effort to win this task for you. The words fell. Garp looked at Pokato beside him. After seeing Garp's eyes, Pokato understood, and immediately replied in a low voice, Vice Admiral, we have sailed near Annie's lobby. Then, Garp's tone was full of curiosity, and he stated to the phone bug, I'm probably in the sea area around Annie's lobby. So, Sengoku, what is the mission you want to talk about? The warship has already completely left the comm belt, and has successfully entered the sea area of the Grand Line. Near the Annie's lobby, what a coincidence, Sengoku's surprised voice came from the phone bug. Paused, Sengoku's tone was full of seriousness. Garp, under the pressure of some people above. Therefore, I want you to change your voyage immediately and rush to the capital of Seven Waters to capture your grandson, Straw Hat Luffy, and arrest the entire Straw Hat Pirates. Recently, 
The behavior of the straw hat pirates is too outrageous, and now it has seriously aroused the dissatisfaction of some people above. So. Garp, I hope you don't screw up this mission. What? Arrest my grandson. Garp's eyes widened. Wait a moment. Luffy, when did you go to the capital of Seven Waters? Is it such a coincidence? Can you accept this task? If you find it inconvenient, I can also arrange for others to perform it. After pondering for a moment, Sengoku asked again. Sengoku, don't worry, I will definitely not screw up this mission. That's it, don't talk about it, I really don't know if you don't mention it, this kid Luffy actually ran to the capital of Seven Waters. It's been a long time since I saw him. I didn't expect to meet him by such a coincidence. I have to go and see Luffy. No, I need to arrest him properly. Then, Garp was very curt and hung up the phone bug. Aside, Pokoto's mouth twitched. Marshal Sengoku. Is it realistic for you to ask Vice Admiral Garp to arrest your own grandson? This is the use of power for personal gain. Do you think Vice Admiral Garp is really going to catch his grandson? What a joke. Of course, Pokato didn't dare to say these words openly. Pokato, immediately asked the helmsman and navigator to change the direction of sailing. The goal this time is the capital of the Seven Waters. Garp gave the order. Pokato left quickly, delivering orders to the helmsman and navigator according to Garp's instructions. Then, under the control of the helmsman, the direction of the warship changed. The goal of this voyage has also ushered in a change. From target Marineford, it became. The goal, the capital of Seven Waters. Chapter 47 Capture Straw Hats. Let me arrest my brother and go to jail. One more. Advertisement. Deck. Seeing the warship turn around, it changed its course and direction. Garp's mood also gradually calmed down a little. Although it is undeniable that the shock brought by Lathan cannot be completely disappeared in a short time. But with Garp's calm state of mind, naturally he won't be affected by this emotion for too long. Now Garp is even more looking forward to. This trip rushed to the capital of Seven Waters to meet Luffy. The Straw Hat Pirates. Luffy, it's been a long time, I think you must miss Grandpa's iron fistful of love. Is it in the capital of Seven Waters? Garp looked at the distant sea with both eyes, with a feeling of emotion and anticipation on his expression. The best way for Garp to treat a grandson who refuses to listen to persuasion and insists on going to sea to become a pirate is to let him try the iron fist of love. After a while, according to the order given by Garp, Pakato ordered the helmsman and navigator without any change, and then returned to Garp's side again. Vice Admiral Garp, the order has been conveyed according to your instructions. Now we are relatively close to the capital of the Seven Waters. Preliminary conservative estimates, if there are not too many accidents during the voyage, we will be able to arrive at the capital of the Seven Waters in about a day. The speed of the warship is very impressive. If this road is unimpeded, it is expected to reach the capital of Seven Waters in one day. Certainly, there are so many accidents on the sea, and no one can guarantee that the sailing can really be unimpeded. Even if Marine controls a warship, there is no exception. If things go well, does it only take a day? Garp's eyes twinkled, his face growing expectant. It looks like, in a day, you can meet Luffy. After many days, I don't know if this kid Luffy is the same as before. Paused. Garp had a flash of inspiration, and a very perfect idea came to his mind. Then, he told Pokato beside him, Call Lathan, it just so happens that I have a task and I need him to help me execute it. Yes, Vice Admiral Garp. Pokato nodded and left. Not long after, Lathan, led by Pokato, returned to the deck. At this time, Lathan had doubts on his face. Old man, what task do you need me to help you perform? Pokato, you go down first. Garp said something to Pokato. Pokato stepped forward wisely, and disappeared on the deck in a blink of an eye. He didn't dare to ask too much about what Garp didn't want him to know. As Garp's confidant and confidant, Pokato has followed Garp for decades, and of course it is impossible not to know Garp's temperament. In addition, Pokato also knows how to do a good job in the basic standards of a subordinate confidant. All in all, a concept must be implemented to the end. Advertisement. That is, never disobey or question the orders of your superiors. Moment. On the huge deck, only Lathan and Garp are left. Do you know where this trip changed the direction of sailing? Garp smiled brightly, changing the direction of sailing. Are we not going to Marineford? Lathan was slightly surprised. If you don't go to Marineford, is there a mission in the middle? Sengoku, there is a task that I need to carry out. Naturally, I will not return to Marineford for the time being. I will consider returning to Marineford after this task is resolved. Garp said expectantly. What mission? Lathan asked next. The goal of our trip to change the direction of the voyage is. The capital of Seven Waters. Have you heard of this place? Garp didn't answer directly, but kept it a secret. The capital of Seven Waters. Lathan narrowed his eyes slightly, and had some guesses in his mind. Then, without waiting for Lathan's response, Garp continued, Our destination on this trip is the capital of Seven Waters. Sengoku's mission is for me to capture a group of pirates, a pirate group called the Straw Hat Pirates. The Straw Hat Pirates. Really, Lathan's guess was confirmed. Just didn't expect it. One day, I will meet this group of guys. And, this day is not far away. However, Lathan is indeed unpredictable. The upcoming meeting with the Straw Hat Pirates for the first time will be so dramatic. Obviously, the Straw Hat Pirates have become the main target of Garp's rush to the Seven Waters. 
Some things must have been introduced to you by your father, Long. Here, I have to mention them carefully to you. Above your head, you actually have two big brothers. One is called Ace. He is now in the waters of New World, and he has also become one of the New World Four Emperors, a pirate of the Whitebeard Pirates. The other one is called Luffy. And Luffy, he is the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates. That is to say, the main target of Sengoku's assignment to me this time. Garp begins briefly with a one-off introduction to the members of the Monkey family. Strictly speaking, Ace does not belong to the Monkey family. But there are some things that Garp can't say openly. Furthermore, Garp has already regarded Ace as his family. It is understandable to introduce Leifen so solemnly. Advertisement. Hearing this, you should be able to understand, right? Garp looked at Leifen. Compared with Ace and Luffy, he values Leifen in front of him more. Whether it is talent, or other aspects. Only Leifen can make Garp feel very gratified all the time. Myself. There are successors. Hey, old man, don't you want to hand over the arduous task of capturing the Straw Hat Pirates to me alone? Leifen looked at Garp suspiciously. Let yourself go and capture the Straw Hat Pirates. Catch Straw Hat Luffy. Not to mention. Thinking of this, Leifen felt a little hopeful. He also wanted to see it. How strong is the overall strength of the Straw Hat Pirates, and is there any difference between my big brother Luffy and my impression? I'm helpless too, Sengoku the damn old guy said. If I don't carry out this mission, he'll send someone else to do it. What can I do? Of course I can only reluctantly accept this task. By the way, it's just a trip, and it won't waste too much time. Garp looked helpless. Okay, you can say whether you want to do it or not. With your current strength, it should be more than enough to deal with a group of them. Yes, from Garp's point of view. Since Leifen was on par with Pokato, it shouldn't be too easy to use this level of strength to deal with the Straw Hat Pirates. Pokato is at the level of Naval Headquarters Colonel Strength, which is not a vegetarian. But even so, they were still abruptly shaken by Leifen, and they were evenly divided after World War I. It can be seen from this. Leifen's strength has also reached the strength level of Colonel Naval Headquarters, and among Colonel Marine, it is still among the best. Garp could tell in his mind. This strength is used to deal with the Straw Hat Pirates, which can basically be said to be sure. By the way, you can also meet your big brother Luffy whom you have never met before. Of course, if you can, you can catch them all together. It saves them from being planted in other people's hands. As the saying goes, the fat and water don't flow into outsiders, fields. If they are not capable enough and you arrest them, it will prove that they are too incompetent. At that time, you don't have to worry too much, just arrest them all, don't have to keep your hands, you can do whatever you want. If you can catch them all, it will be a great achievement for you to join Marine in the future, and it can improve your Marine status. Garp instructed Leifen with a smile on his face. So. You old man, you want me to arrest my brother and go to jail. Leifen looked weird. Catch Luffy. Good guy. This is the rhythm of killing relatives righteously. This old man really has a bad heart. However, this task is indeed very exciting. So. I accept this task. Leifen readily agreed. Chapter 48 Encountering a Pirate Ship. We're ready to launch Leifen. Second update. Advertisement. White clouds fluttered. The sky is clear. The golden sun hangs on the edge of the sky, and the scattered halo moistens everything, bringing vitality to this land. A dazzling golden light flickered on the surface of the sea, like a large piece of gold falling into the sea. Crash. The waves are rippling and fluttering with the sea breeze. Sailing in the sea is very boring. People will always inadvertently ignore the passage of time. Tread tread. A burst of chaotic footsteps sounded from the deck of the warship, with a disordered rhythm. Colonel Pocato. A pirate ship appeared in the sea area 3,000 meters ahead. Would you like to attack it? Several marines rushed to Pokato's face with a serious look on their faces, and reported the situation they had detected in advance. Pirate ship, Pokato raised his brows, his expression slightly surprised, I said this way, why can't even see a shadow of a pirate ship, and I'm still wondering, when did this sea become so safe? Did not expect, I just thought of this. Pirate ship, here it is. Blame my crow's mouth. Nowadays, the warship has cleared its way out of the calm belt and into the heart of the Grand Line. Can sail all the way down. But he never encountered a pirate ship, which surprised Pokato. Generally speaking, after sailing on the Grand Line in a day, you will encounter three or five pirate ships at most, and at least one or two at least. Unexpectedly, in just a few days, they didn't let them encounter any pirate ships. Pokato was still a little puzzled before. Could it be that these pirates are all rehabilitated? Until now, this pirate ship finally appeared, which can be regarded as a solution for Pokato. The reason why no pirates were encountered along the way was purely because of their bad luck. This is not. The pirate ship finally ran into them. Is it 3,000 meters away from the sea? It's so far apart, can you clearly see the pirate flag they are flying high? So you can determine the exact identity of that pirate ship. Pokato pondered for a moment, then asked. As an excellent and qualified marine colonel, before any order is issued, it needs to be filtered and carefully considered by the brain. Before dealing with a group of pirates, no matter how weak the opponent is, Pokato will not take it lightly. Investigate the situation of these pirates in advance, investigate their information, and then consider whether to launch an attack. This is Pokato's usual way of doing things. 
Very calm. Also very cautious. It is this stable character that makes Pokato's orders rarely go wrong, and can minimize Marines' casualties in battle. Kill the most enemies with the least casualties. Advertisement. This is the good fighting concept that Pokato has always maintained. They seem to be. The White Bear Pirates. Captain Rabbit the White Bear is a pirate with a bounty of 110 million berry. The rest of the crew are diverse, and the bounty can reach 100 million berry. The entire pirate group has a cumulative bounty of 200 million berry. Several marines quickly took out the bounty slips and handed one of the bounty slips to Pokato. Take a closer look. Pokato knew the information of this pirate ship. A pirate group with a cumulative bounty of 200 million berry. Such a pirate group, placed in the Grand Line, is indeed not weak. Certainly, dealing with pirates of this level is not enough to alarm Garp. It's a trivial matter, and Pokato can handle it by himself. Try to avoid long-range combat. If we conduct long-range bombardment with them, if our warship is damaged, it will be a big loss. So, let the helmsman control the warship, and get closer to these pirates at the fastest speed. Order, let everyone get ready for close combat. Pokato thought for a moment, then delivered the order. Yes, Colonel Pokato, several marines are preparing to leave. Sudden, Pokato spoke again. By the way, call Lathan by the way. Yes, after a while, Lathan walked slowly to the deck with a samurai sword in hand. There is a very exciting thing, do you want to experience it? Pokato's eyes flashed, and he asked directly with a bright smile on his face. Seeing your smile, Colonel Pokato, for some reason, I suddenly have an ominous premonition. Lathan looked at Pokato suspiciously. This matter will be of great help to you joining Marine in the future. Moreover, it will also allow you to improve your own achievements before joining Marine. After you join Marine, your status will skyrocket. Furthermore, I'm thinking, your knife seems to have never seen blood. A knife that has not drunk blood will make its edge weaker and weaker, and it needs to go through a baptism. Similarly, you also need a baptism full of blood. In this way, your own mentality will be sublimated. In short, your swordsmanship needs to be contaminated with human life. Can you understand me? Just ask you if it's exciting enough. Pokato explained in detail, a swordsman who has not experienced the baptism of blood is not a qualified swordsman. Even though Lathan is only seven years old, since he has already embarked on this road, he naturally needs to face all the obstacles that he will encounter on this road. The knife has never seen blood. Swordsmanship has never contaminated human life. Advertisement. How dare you call yourself a swordsman? A qualified swordsman stands out from the battle. Meet the pirates. Soon Lathan hit upon the key point. Just less than 3,000 meters away, there is a pirate ship sailing. I have ordered the helmsman to let the warship approach and prepare to attack them. If you are interested, then I can save trouble here. I only need to leave it to you. I believe that this is more than enough. Pokato looked serious. I have to say, Colonel Pokato, what you said made me feel a little ready to move. Lathan smiled. As a swordsman, how can the blade in his hand not see blood? Also, Lathan also wanted to experience it. What is it like to fight for real life and death? Presumably, it must be very exciting. Also very interesting. Think about it. Lathan couldn't help but lifted the samurai sword in his hand, and the sharp blade reflected the golden halo from the sky, spreading it dazzlingly. His face was full of anticipation, his eyes flickering and he stared out of the sea area in front of him. Vaguely, from the end of the boundless sea in the distance, it seems that a pirate ship can already be seen looming, which is constantly appearing in the eyes, gradually becoming clear from blur. Can already be seen. That's a pirate ship, a pirate ship flying a skull flag. Pirates. It seems that he has never fought a pirate before. This time, I can get my wish. The helmsman drives the warship to approach at full speed. The rest of the army is on standby, and no attack is allowed without my order. Listen up, we're ready to launch Lathan. Pokato ordered loudly. The words fell. Lathan froze for a moment. Kindness. It seems that something is not right. Put. Throw yourself as a cannonball. Lathan looked odd. Emotion. Not only have I become a tool man, but I have also become a cannonball in your eyes. Cannonballs specially used to fight these pirate groups. Chapter 49 Too noisy. You should be quiet for a while. Open black lens bracket third watch close black lens bracket. Advertisement. At the same time, the sea area is three kilometers away from the warship. A huge pirate ship floated motionless on the sea, and the skeleton flag hung high, fluttering wantonly with the sea wind, very eye-catching. This is, the unique flag of the polar bear pirates. Pirate ship, deck, boss, it's marine, we met marine. Marine, the whole pirate ship became chaotic and noisy in an instant. All the pirates were full of fear and apprehension, staring at the warship that was sailing towards them thousands of meters away and getting closer to them. They started to panic. Panic spreads. Marine, this is their natural enemy. As a group of pirates who do all kinds of evil, it is natural to be terrified of encountering such things as Marine. What are you panicking about? What are you arguing about? Shut up lousy all. Rabbit the white bear took steady steps and walked to the edge of the deck fence. His face was expressionless, and his eyes were sharp and calm, staring at the approaching warship. He has a hulking figure, as burly as a white bear, with a scar like a centipede in the corner of his eye, making his face look a bit ferocious and ferocious. Rabbit the white bear has a bounty of 110 million berry. As a pirate with a bounty of hundreds of millions of berry, rabbits naturally has a bad reputation. 
On the Grand Line, Rabbits the White Bear is one of the more famous pirates. If it's just an ordinary warship, Lousy can sink them with one hand. Let this group of marines also have a good experience. Who stipulated that pirates can only run away when they encounter a marine? Others are afraid of their marines, but Lousy is not afraid of them. Rabbits shouted in a cold voice full of confidence. The voice spread loudly. Suddenly, the chaotic atmosphere cooled down a little. A group of pirates looked at Rabbits's tall figure with admiration on their faces, their inner panic and fear were a little restrained, as if they had found the backbone in the panic. Let them get rid of the panic quickly. Order. Immediately get the gunners ready to attack. Rabbits immediately conveyed the order to his subordinates. Yes, boss. The gunner pushed the turret and moved it to the center of the deck. A group of pirates held weapons and blades, and their faces were fierce, waiting for a deadly battle that was about to break out. Listen to Lousy. Marines are just a bunch of useless eaters. Later, let's see how Lousy kills these marines. Rabbit's voice was bold and resonant, which effectively boosted morale and dispelled the fear in the hearts of many pirates present, turning the fear in the hearts of these pirates into excitement and excitement. Near, the distance between the pirate ship and the warship ranged from 1,000 meters, to 800 meters, to 700 meters. Boss, something is wrong. Marine, why didn't you take the initiative to attack us? Several pirates stood next to Rabbit's, suspicious. Wait and see, Rabbit spoke briefly, he kept his eyes on the warship. Immediately afterwards, the warship stopped in the sea 200 meters away. Advertisement. At the same time, a smaller sailboat, launched from a warship, was slowly approaching the pirate ship. See here, Rabbits was a little taken aback. A group of pirates looked extremely confused. What's going on? Boss, are you going to send someone over to negotiate with us? A marine couldn't help blurting out. Otherwise, why send a small sailboat to approach their pirate ship? Can't figure it out. Their thinking is a little short-circuited. Visible to the naked eye, this little sailboat is sailing towards the pirate ship. Keep getting closer. 200 meters, 100 meters, 50 meters, negotiation, ha ha ha, rabbits laughed suddenly, this group of marines actually want to send people over to negotiate with us. Could it be that they are afraid of my reputation as a white bear? As expected of the boss, a group of pirates shouted excitedly. Finally, the small sailboat docked next to the pirate ship. And at this moment, rabbits and more than 300 pirate groups finally saw it, carrying the people on this small sailboat. But the moment when you see each other, they were collectively stunned. What? What's going on? A child. A child who is only six or seven years old. What does this mean? Marine, actually let a six or seven year old kid come to negotiate with them. In the end, what is the plot? Even though Rabbits was well informed, he was frightened by the weird things that happened before his eyes. This small sailboat, just carried a child. What about the Marines? Can't even see a Marine escort. What is this for? Could it be? Is it tiring for a six or seven year old child to negotiate with them? Are these Marines crazy? The atmosphere is silent. Weird. Rabbits and the more than 300 pirates were stunned, their thinking stiffened, and they looked at the young and immature figure on the small sailboat with a dazed face. Advertisement. Eyes. Can't move. Their eyes were also full of sluggishness, and their thinking could not return to normal in a short time. Boss. Boss. This. What does this mean? A group of pirates looked at Rabbits the white bear. Let a six or seven year old kid come to negotiate with them. What's going on in Marine's head? Just when they were collectively sluggish. I see. The one in their eyes, the six or seven year old child who carried a small sailboat by himself, had already set foot on board their pirate ship. Marine, are you provoking us? Or, is there any conspiracy here? But no matter what the conspiracy, this kid will become our trump card to threaten Marine. You guys, go and take this kid down for me. The hostages given away for nothing, don't want them for nothing. Rabbits didn't think too deeply, and directly changed to give orders to his subordinates. Yes, boss. Finally, Lathan boarded the ship without incident. Although, the process is dramatic. But finally, they arrived at the pirate ship smoothly. Alone, broke into the base camp of the pirate ship alone. At the same time, before Lathan finished observing the hull structure of the pirate ship, several vicious pirates approached him. Boy, although I don't know what kind of medicine is sold in your marine board. But all in all, since marine wants to send you to seek death, of course we can only accept it. Several pirates grinned ferociously. Where's your captain? Lathan asked with a samurai sword in hand. Captain, you will naturally see our captain later. Several pirates sneered again and again. Let your captain take the initiative to stand up, I don't want to waste too much time here. Lathan went on. What are you? You think our captain is something you, a brat, can see whenever you want. The pirate shouted coldly. They were already holding bladed weapons, staring at Lathan with evil faces, and surrounded Lathan, trying to shrink the encirclement step by step. Never mind. Seeing that the group of pirates in front of him didn't cooperate, Lathan shook his head and laughed. In order to avoid wasting extra time with you, I plan to use the simplest and quickest way to find your captain. By the way, let you annoying guys be quiet for a while. You guys are really too noisy. I'm a little distracted by the noise. Next second, without waiting for these pirates, they responded angrily to Lathan's words. Hum. A horrible breath. Invisibly, it was released from Lathan's body. Chapter 50 The Monstrous Conquerors Sweeps the Ground. Open black lens bracket 4 more close black lens bracket.
Advertisement. Warship. Deck. Garp has already reached the deck fence, 200 meters away in the sea, looking at the pirate ship with the skull flag flying high in the distance. Beside him, Pocado, Kebi, Belumbo, and hundreds of marines who were ready to go, looked at the movement of the pirate ship in unison. A group of marines tightly held the spears and blades in their hands, with focused and meticulous expressions. When fighting pirates, anyone who is careless will die in the hands of pirates. These are the experience of blood, the experience gained by countless marines in exchange for blood. Most of the marines present had fought with pirates before. Everyone is experienced and seasoned, so naturally there are no such shortcomings and problems that only novice will appear. Colonel Pocato, is this really all right? Kevi gritted his teeth lightly, took a deep breath, his expression was full of apprehension and tension, he couldn't help turning his head, and asked Pocato beside him. Leaving Leifen alone, he broke into the stronghold of a pirate group. This, is there really no surprise? Furthermore, that's still a group of pirates headed by Barry with a bounty of 110 million. And Leifen is only seven years old. Undeniable, Leifen is really strong. But even so, Kevi still dared not think about it, and let Leifen face the scene of hundreds of pirates besieging and killing him alone. If he can't even deal with this group of pirates, then he will be too disappointing. Pocato looked calm, looking at the pirate ship intently. Since Leifen can do it, and he is evenly divided in a fight with him, it proves that Leifen's strength itself is not a big problem. With this strength, if even this pirate group cannot be destroyed, then it is not the reason of lack of strength, but the problem of Leifen itself. As a marine, sooner or later you have to face pirates. Also, as a qualified swordsman, how can he keep his swordsmanship from killing people for the rest of his life? A knife always needs blood to become sharper. Sword hero, only by experiencing more life and death fights can he grow and become stronger. According to Pocato, what Leifen lacks now is actual combat. The actual combat of life and death, rather than the kind of petty trouble. Pocato is right. Garp agreed with Pocato's views and insights. But, but, Kirby was still a little worried. Around. The rest of the marines also looked at the pirate ship not far away, their faces full of seriousness and solemnity. Advertisement. Just repair. Ah, Pocato gives an order. They will attack immediately. Okay. Mother-in-law's habits still can't be changed. How can you become a qualified marine like this? Kebi, your mental quality is still too bad. This shortcoming, if you don't get rid of it in time, it will become your most deadly place in the future. Garp glanced at Kirby, mercilessly criticizing him severely. Yes, Vice Admiral Garp. Kirby lowered his head in shame. Only, he was still apprehensive. In addition to Kebi, many Marines present were also deeply worried and suspicious. Leifen is only seven years old. Go face to face with a band of pirates alone. Can this really work? Dot dot dot. Marine, what are you planning? Let a six or seven year old kid run alone on our pirate ship. Isn't this, sending us hostages? When did Marine become so stupid? Rabbit the white bear couldn't figure it out. What was Marine thinking this time? Why was a six or seven year old child sent here suddenly and strangely? Could it be, what's so weird about this kid? No matter how weird he is, he's just a six or seven year old brat. Who I am, I'm Rabbit the White Bear, a great pirate with a bounty of 110 million berry. If Marine wants to rely on this brat to deal with us, then I have to say, they are really naive enough. Rabbits kept thinking, from beginning to end, unpredictable, the intentions of this group of Marines. Let a kid run to their pirate ship. Apart from giving them their heads, there is no second possibility. Boss, could it be? This kid, is the weapon marine secretly trained since childhood. Some pirates have voiced their opinion. A weapon that was secretly trained since childhood. This opinion was quickly adopted by rabbits. This possibility is very high. Marine, you can't send people over to die. Advertisement. But ah, who does marine think I am? I'm a great pirate with a bounty of hundreds of millions of berries. So what if this brat is a weapon that marine secretly trained since childhood? Is it possible that he can really subvert our entire pirate group? Are you kidding me? Let's not say there is only one brat, even if there are 10,000 such brats, I can easily bury them all in this sea. Rabbits has very strong self-confidence in his own strength. Besides, did you forget, this kid, there was only one person who boarded our pirate ship from the beginning to the end. A six or seven year old kid broke into the base camp of our pirate group alone. Even if he has supernatural abilities and means, it won't help. We have hundreds of people. Even if it takes human life to pile it up. He, a six or seven year old kid, can be piled to death. Rabbits continued his analysis. This point was recognized by all the pirates around. The difference in the number of people is too great. No matter how special that little devil is, they don't think he can wipe out three or four hundred of them. So, that kid is alone, how could he deal with more than three hundred of us? After thinking about many kinds of guesses, a confident smile appeared on Rabbits's face involuntarily. But at this moment, changes are coming silently. Hum, an invisible breath slowly spread to the entire pirate ship. Instantly, the momentum swept across the four directions and spread rapidly. At first, this momentum is like a weak river. It can be next second. The aura turned into raging waves, an incomparably terrifying and majestic aura, which completely enveloped the entire pirate ship in just one breath. Together with rabbits, there are three or four hundred pirates in the whole ship, all of which are wrapped in this surging momentum. 
Every corner was unavoidably affected by this terrifying momentum. This is, conquerors hockey, monstrous conquerors, full scrub. The momentum is turbulent, like surging waves, crazily washing all parts of the pirate ship.